history is going to be made today in South Suburban Dalton. Tiffany Henyard will be sworn in as the village's first woman mayor. Henyard won 82% of the vote in the April election. She'll be sworn in at 4 this afternoon at Dalton Main Park. Henyard has been the subject of some past controversy. In January, she gave away free gas at a Food for Less in Dalton in what was billed as a kickoff to her mayoral campaign. Some legal, legal experts told CBS2 political investigator Dana Kozlov at the time that if the gas giveaway didn't cross the legal line, it definitely stood right on it. Tiffany Henyard, once dubbed the super mayor of Dalton, Illinois, has found herself in a whirlwind of controversy for her extravagant spending habits, which have left the small town drowning in a massive $5 million debt. The failed burger joint owner turned local leader has reportedly been splashing the town's cash on unapproved ice rinks, endless parties, and luxury travels, including first-class flights and stays in high-end hotels like the Four Seasons. Since taking office in 2021, Henyard's flamboyant expenditures have included hiring DJs for government meetings and utilizing local police officers as part of her personal security detail, something she had obviously needed in a small town, costing the town about a million dollars in overtime. This spending spree has become a sore point for Dalton, a community of around 20,000 people just south of Chicago, now buried under a massive financial burden. The tale of Henyard's tenure is filled with head-scratching moments, such as her decision to build an ice rink for $100 $115,000 without the village board's approval, and then proceeding to hire a separate company to complete the project right before an election, using it as a platform to mock the town board. Furthermore, Henyard and the town board controversially voted to donate $10,000 to her own foundation, which allegedly supports cancer patients, but was chartered on the very day of the donation. Equally head-scratching was her arrest in 2016. She was arrested and officially charged with criminal trespass to vehicle according to Chicago police records. So, she was trying to break into more than one car to commit a crime? Interesting. Anyways, Henyard's love for throwing parties and undertaking costly trips on the town's dime has also become a significant issue. Notably, her travels to cities like Atlanta, Austin, and New York City, when she spared no expense on accommodations and travel comforts, have cost Dalton over $67,000. Moreover, her usage of local cops for personal errands and security has added seven Seven figures in overtime pay to the town's expenses. Trustees have taken legal action against Henyard, accusing her of financial misconduct, including forging checks and withholding financial records. In response, Henyard has accused her critics of coming after her because of her race, despite many of them being black themselves. With a combined salary of about $285,000 from her roles as mayor and Thornton Township supervisor, Henyard's leadership has raised questions about her priorities and the fiscal sustainability of Dalton under her watch. Have you ever worked at a place that hired a new manager only to find out that this person is clearly unqualified and unready for the position? Budget talks are important, however, they can be boring for some people. But when the person in charge of the budget is at the center of numerous lawsuits and a federal investigation, people pay attention. Such is the case in South Suburban Thornton Township. Some residents have raised concerns about the budget, but last night's meeting was suddenly canceled. NBC 5's Regina Waldrop is in South Holland with the story and what happens next. They came and they waited for almost an hour. Then they were told Tuesday night's Thornton Township Board of Trustees meeting was not going to happen. She walks in and says, hey guys, the meeting is canceled. Sorry, we're going to have to postpone it. On the agenda, the proposed spending plan for the township, which consists of 17 South Suburban communities and approximately 185,000 residents. I got all of my paperwork, collected everything, you know, and I'm sitting here ready. But the budget is the main thing, the reason why I came. Right. But a budget. Tony Richardson and many others at the meeting have been calling for more transparency. They were hoping to ask questions about the proposed spending plan. They also say they have concerns about Tiffany Henyard. She's the township supervisor and also the mayor of Dalton. Henyard is the focus of a federal criminal investigation and numerous lawsuits by business owners and employees, current and former. Plenty of red flags and I can speak so much on the lawsuits and what it does to us as residents from Dalton to the rest of the Thorn Township. Everybody is fed up. 
they've let things get too far. Christopher Gonzalez is a township uh, trustee. A lot of lack of communication and just... I hate to say, but you know, incompetent. Gonzalez says he was told Tuesday's meeting was canceled and rescheduled for Friday afternoon because the board didn't have a quorum. They were here, they were waiting, they wanted to get their voices heard. It's, it's just, it's not right. We reached out to Tiffany Hayard's administration, but didn't hear back before our story aired. We just need to make, get some changes made here as far as just moving forward and getting some transparency, getting some questions answered. And again, that Board of Trustees meeting will now take place this Friday at 1 o'clock at Thornton Township offices. Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Our thanks to Regina. He is a well-known Chicago activist, known for his work at crime scenes and helping grieving families. But now, Andrew Holmes is out of a job. The nonprofit he worked for says he's been terminated amid a lawsuit and allegations that he assaulted a former co-worker. Holmes also serves as a trustee in the village of Dalton. NBC5's Regina Waldrop with tonight's story. We in the, the most dangerous areas at the most dangerous time at night. His name, his face, synonymous with the fight against Chicago violence. We are just concerned about the child right about now. On TV screens and in newspapers, Andrew Holmes stood with families during their most difficult times. He met with dignitaries, received countless awards for his work as a crisis responder. But in the wake of allegations against him, now the group he worked for, Chicago Survivors, says Andrew's been terminated. A statement to NBC5 reads, our mission is to provide crime victim services to family members of homicide victims, so our relationship with those families in our community is paramount. Without compromise, there needs to be strong mutual trust and an assumed high level of safety for the adults and children we serve. For those reasons, we terminated his employment in April upon learning of the serious allegations. I'm fighting for every woman. Holmes also serves as an elected trustee in the village of Dalton. He's being sued by Fania Dukes, Mayor Tiffany Hanyard's ex-assistant. Dukes filed this civil lawsuit against Hanyard and Holmes. She accuses him of assaulting her. Dukes issued this statement last week describing the lawsuit's allegations. Until my last memory was me waking up in his room. In this video, she details what she says happened before and after an incident that allegedly occurred almost a year ago during a taxpayer-paid economic development trip to Las Vegas. On that trip, Henyard, a handful of village and Thornton Township reps, and trustee Holmes. According to the lawsuit, after dinner and walking the Las Vegas Strip with Holmes, Dukes felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. Holmes has not responded to our repeated requests for a comment. Mary Avant is a retired Chicago police officer. She says the allegations are serious and Chicago survivors did the right thing. I think it's a little bit of being careful because they have to be concerned about themselves and the look it gives them. And many residents and also some trustees are calling on Andrew Holmes to step down from the village board. Reporting from Dalton, I'm Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. For the very first time, we are hearing from the woman at the center of a lawsuit involving Dalton Village trustee Andrew Holmes and the mayor, Tiffany Henyard. The woman accuses Holmes of sexually assaulting her. NBC5's Regina Waldrop has been working on this story for several months. She's the mayor's former assistant, and we want to make it very clear, we did not interview her. She provided us with a link to a pre-taped statement that details what she says happened during and after a taxpayer-funded trip to Las Vegas. She says she's a survivor of an assault, and the time has come to share her story. But this has been a long journey for me already. Fania Dukes filed this civil lawsuit against her old boss, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, and trustee Andrew Holmes, accusing Holmes of assault and Henyard of retaliation. That I'm fighting for every woman that's been in my position. I'm fighting for a sister that doesn't have a voice. I'm fighting for a sister that's scared. The incident allegedly occurred May 24th last year during an economic development trip to Las Vegas that's now under federal investigation. On that trip, Henyard, a handful of village and Thornton Township reps, and trustee Andrew Holmes, whom Fania called Uncle Drew. He made everyone feel comfortable. He's, I've even been in places by myself with him, in cars, wherever, by myself, plenty of times before ever anything. And he's never gave me an inkling of he'll harm me, he will make a pass at me. He's never done any of that. According to the suit after dinner and walking the Las Vegas Strip with trustee Holmes, Fania felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. Until my last memory was me waking up in his room. The suit details a conversation between Fania and Officer Byron Miles when they returned from Las Vegas. 
Miles was a member of Henyard's security detail at the time. He claimed Holmes told him he had unprotected sex with Vinnie in Las Vegas. The suit also alleges Holmes, in a video call to Officer Miles, showed Vinnie partially undressed in his hotel bed. Officer Miles advised Vinnie to seek medical care, according to the lawsuit. You're the only person that stood up for me, opened your mouth. According to the lawsuit, Fania claims she was fired shortly after bringing the accusation against Holmes to Henyard. Officer Miles was removed from his role in the mayor's security detail and demoted to patrol duty. Miles has also filed a civil lawsuit and the Department of Human Rights launched an investigation. The village told us in a statement it conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations led by an independent third party. It goes on to say Officer Miles was interviewed and denied knowing anything about the allegations. Ms. Dukes refused to cooperate with our investigation, it says. This is nothing more than two disgruntled village employees trying to make off with taxpayers' hard-earned dollars. The village looks forward to defending these allegations. Trustee Holmes didn't respond to our repeated requests for a comment. <laughs> Fania says she started a foundation to support women like her. Hoping that if you are a victim, please find your way to contact me or any of my people, and we're going to help you. Because you need a voice, and if you don't have your own voice, I will be. Dalton trustees hired Lori Lightfoot, Chicago's former mayor, to lead an investigation into Dalton's mayor. Tonight's village board meeting gets underway at 6.30. It's Friday night. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Stefan Holtz. And I'm Allison Rosati. We begin with something unexpected. A rescheduled budget hearing brings lots of fireworks in South Suburban Thornton Township, where a new budget was approved just a short time ago. Now, residents had lots of questions about spending and the township supervisor, Tiffany Henyard, who's also the mayor of Dalton. Our Regina Walter has been on this story from the very beginning. She joins us now live with the latest. Regina. Al Allison, I have covered a lot of budget meetings, and this one uh, that just wrapped up a short time ago, anything but boring. There was clapping, shouting, screaming, and then there were police. They were on the, the ready to escort people out of the meeting. Reach for yourself. Remove her. Remove her. Remove her. Remove her. Now you gotta go. This budget meeting? Anything but typical. Thornton Township residents from several South Suburban communities filled the room and they had lots to say. Because what we're not going to do is we're not going to be homeless behind her raising our taxes. And you, were, you have said that you have good business skills, then you should take a look at the budget again. You are a public servant. You serve us. Township Supervisor Tiffany Hanyard is also the mayor of Dalton. She is the focus of a wide-ranging FBI investigation. She's also being sued by several Dalton employees, current and former. Residents say they're concerning issues with the township's spending and other areas of township government. There are um, so many red flags. People are just so tired of this whole situation with the uh, non, not being transparent. And if for Dalton, I can speak for Dalton, we don't know what's going on with our money at all. Henyard makes $224,000 a year in her township supervisor job. In December, the Board of Trustees passed an ordinance that some called outlandish. It states that if Henyard runs for re-election in 2025 and loses, her successor's salary would drop to only $25,000 a year. But a bill passed in Springfield this week would undo that ordinance and make sure a move like this doesn't happen in the future. And that bill did pass in both houses, and right now all it needs is the signature of the governor. And here's what we still don't know tonight, the total amount of the spending plan that was approved. We're still trying to find that number. I'm live in South, South Holland tonight. Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Regina, thank you. Thank you. Budget talks are important, however, they can be boring for some people. But when the person in charge of the budget is at the center of numerous lawsuits and a federal investigation, people pay attention. Such is the case in South Suburban Thornton Township. Some residents have raised concerns about the budget, but last night's meeting was suddenly canceled. NBC 5's Regina Waldrop is in South Holland with the story and what happens next. They came and they waited. For almost an hour. Then they were told Tuesday night's Thornton Township Board of Trustees meeting was not going to happen. She walks in and says, hey guys, the meeting is canceled. 
Sorry, we don't have to postpone it. On the agenda, the proposed spending plan for the township, which consists of 17 South Suburban communities and approximately 185,000 residents. I got all of my paperwork, collected everything, you know, and I'm sitting here ready. But the budget is the main thing, the reason why I came. Right. But a budget. Tony Richardson and many others at the meeting have been calling for more transparency. They were hoping to ask questions about the proposed spending plan. They also say they have concerns about Tiffany Henyard. She's the township supervisor and also the mayor of Dalton. Henyard is the focus of a federal criminal investigation and numerous lawsuits by business owners and employees, current and former. Plenty of red flags and I can speak so much on the lawsuits and what it does to us as residents from Dalton to the rest of the Thorn Township. Everybody is fed up. They've let things get too far. Christopher Gonzalez is a township um, trustee. A lot of lack of communication and just I hate to say, but you know, incompetent. Gonzalez says he was told Tuesday's meeting was canceled and rescheduled for Friday afternoon because the board didn't have a quorum. They were here, they were waiting, they wanted to get their voices heard. It's it's just, it's not right. We reached out to Tiffany Hayard's administration, but didn't hear back before our story aired. We just need to make get some changes made here as far as just moving forward and getting some transparency, getting some questions answered. And again, that Board of Trustees meeting will now take place this Friday at 1 o'clock at Thornton Township offices. Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Our thanks to Regina. He is a well-known Chicago activist, known for his work at crime scenes and helping grieving families. But now Andrew Holmes is out of a job. The nonprofit he worked for says he's been terminated amid a lawsuit and allegations that he assaulted a former co-worker. Holmes also serves as a trustee in the village of Dalton. NBC5's Regina Waldrop with tonight's story. We in the, the most dangerous areas at the most dangerous time at night. His name, his face, synonymous with the fight against Chicago violence. We are just concerned about the child right about now. On TV screens and in newspapers, Andrew Holmes stood with families during their most difficult times. He met with dignitaries, received countless awards for his work as a crisis responder. But in the wake of allegations against him, now the group he worked for, Chicago Survivors, says Andrew's been terminated. A statement to NBC5 reads, our mission is to provide crime victim services to family members of homicide victims, so our relationship with those families in our community is paramount. Without compromise, there needs to be strong mutual trust and an assumed high level of safety for the adults and children we serve. For those reasons, we terminated his employment in April upon learning of the serious allegations. I'm fighting for every woman. Holmes also serves as an elected trustee in the village of Dalton. He's being sued by Fania Dukes, Mayor Tiffany Hanyard's ex-assistant. Dukes filed this civil lawsuit against Hanyard and Holmes. She accuses him of assaulting her. Dukes issued this statement last week describing the lawsuit's allegations. Until my last memory was me waking up in his room. In this video, she details what she says happened before and after an incident that allegedly occurred almost a year ago during a taxpayer-paid economic development trip to Las Vegas. On that trip, Henyard, a handful of village and Thornton Township reps, and trustee Holmes. According to the lawsuit, after dinner and walking the Las Vegas Strip with Holmes, Dukes felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. Holmes has not responded to our repeated requests for a comment. Mary Avant is a retired Chicago police officer. She says the allegations are serious and Chicago survivors did the right thing. I think it's a little bit of being careful because they have to be concerned about themselves and the look it gives them. And many residents and also some trustees are calling on Andrew Holmes to step down from the village board. Reporting from Dalton, I'm Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. This is an NBC5 News exclusive. They put their lives on the line when people need help. But some firefighters in a South Suburban community are raising concerns about the money that is supposed to be spent on their retirement and health care benefits. NBC5's Regina Waldrop spoke with one firefighter in Dalton who's now demanding answers. The ongoing saga in Dalton now spilling over into the fire department. Well, when the mayor first started to run in 2021, we did endorse her. Um, and then everything went sideways. Adam Farrick has been a firefighter in the village for 10 years. He's also a union rep for Local 3766. We have a ton of concerns. Uh, Most revolve around financial issues. These are some of the grievances the union has filed against the village. Farrick claims many of the village's 21 firefighters don't want to speak out for fear of retaliation. And there's always that scare of retaliation of what's going to happen if, if you know, we don't beat to their drum. 
Farrick claims money taken out of their checks for a retirement plan not going where it should. I pick uh, the amount that I would like with taken out of my check and then that money is supposed to go to Nationwide. It has not been happening. He also claims firefighters are having issues with health insurance, which the village pays for. These are some of the documents shared with NBC5 that say premiums have not been received. Members are getting claims denied, and we did file agreements over that as well. Trustee Brittany Norwood tells us these issues are very concerning. It's very sad. Um, it's sad because for the last three years, um, my colleagues on the board and I have been questioning how the money is being spent. We've been fighting for transparency so that we can have the answers to these financials. Firefighters say they've been working without a contract going on five years, and they claim the village is refusing to sit down and negotiate. We all come here because we, we love this place. But you just wish... I wish that the upper administration could get it together and do the right thing. The Henyard administration did not respond to our requests for a statement. In Dalton, I'm Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Regina, thank you. Right now at 4.30, disorder in the village of Dalton that we've been covering for months is now impacting other suburbs where Mayor Tiffany Henyard also has a leadership role. Henyard is also the supervisor of Thornton Township, which includes a total of 17 towns. Elected officials are speaking out about budgets, federal probes, and financial records. Regina Waldrop is in Markham with more on that story. Dalton, not the only community concerned about self-titled super mayor, Tiffany Henyard. The mayor of Markham questioning her decisions and her leadership. Henyard has dual roles, mayor and Thornton Township supervisor. I'm standing with the full force of this government here, and I don't see that happening in in Thornton Township. I don't see it happening in Dalton e either. 17 communities make up Thornton Township, representing more than 158,000 people. And this township, also a taxing body. Right now, the township is without a budget. It was to be approved May 31st, but was tabled. That budget needs to be looked into much deeper. Aldermen say they are being inundated with calls from taxpayers. We, I hear it every day. There is no transparency within our township. Henyard is at the center of a wide-ranging federal investigation and a number of lawsuits. You know, at some point, that you know, there, there needs to be some oversight and someone has to get to the bottom of what and why these things are happening. Questions are also being raised about Henyard using taxpayer dollars for personal expenses, including her makeup artist. This itemized payroll sheet for the township from May of last year lists Brandon Molman as an administrative assistant. But when we reached out to him, he told us he's Henyard's makeup artist. Chris Gonzalez is a Thornton Township uh, trustee. Just, once again, a long, you know, a long series, unfortunately, of things that just seem to be uh, done incorrectly and or, you know, but possibly uh, illegally. We reached out to Henyard's administration for comment, but didn't hear back. Today, Governor Pritzker shared his thoughts on Tiffany Hanyard and whether the state should step in. Uh, there is an investigation that's been called for and now. I know there was a veto that was overridden that will now allow that investigation to go forward. Reporting from Markham, I'm Regina Waldrop. NBC5 News. Thanks to Regina. She's worked hard on that story. And chaos, confusion, and police rushing in to remove people from a suburban Dalton building. This all happened last night after a majority of trustees voted for Chicago's former mayor, Lori Lightfoot, to continue her investigation of Dalton's current mayor, Tiffany Henyard. NBC5's Regina Waldrop has more on what happens next. Dalton's Village Hall. Hello. Nobody's going to be heard if you keep talking. A hotbed of activity Monday night with a village board meeting that went off course. Former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot was there. Okay, nobody going to speak. We're going to clear the room in a minute. Briefly addressing residents before her mic was shut off. Okay, Even though they turned the mics uh, off, yeah. we will right. continue working okay. on behalf of the rest yes. of Dalton, yes. and we will give you the We're facts you that you deserve. Okay. While we pay anybody any money, if y'all have the actual people, meaning the FBI is here, so why would we waste money? Before the meeting was stopped, the majority of trustees voted to override a recent veto by the mayor. 
allowing Lightfoot to continue her investigation into Tiffany Henyard, who's accused of misspending and also at the center of a number of lawsuits in a wide-ranging federal probe. Lightfoot in a statement writing, I look forward to the work ahead and urge Mayor Henyard and her administration to fully cooperate with this investigation by promptly providing the requested documentation to give all concerned a complete and accurate accounting of the fiscal conditions for the village. During public comment, residents had a lot to say about the village's finances, investigations, and the fact that barricades were put up around Village Hall before the meeting. I think it's so horrible that this mayor will use her police department to block all the parking spaces so the elderly and the handicapped people have to walk a block to get to this meeting. Also happening at that meeting, Mayor Henyard struck down the recent appointment of Trustee Jason House as Mayor Pro Tem. The next Dalton Village Board meeting is set for June 17th. Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Regina, you are on the story. We appreciate it. It's Friday night. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Stefan Holtz. And I'm Allison Rosati. We begin with something unexpected. A rescheduled budget hearing brings lots of fireworks in South Suburban Thornton Township, where a new budget was approved just a short time ago. Now, residents had lots of questions about spending and the township supervisor, Tiffany Henyard, who's also the mayor of Dalton. Our Regina Walter has been on this story from the very beginning. She joins us now live with the latest. Regina. Allison, I have covered a lot of budget meetings, and this one uh, that just wrapped up a short time ago, anything but boring. There was clapping, shouting, screaming, and then there were police. They were on the ready to escort people out of the meeting. Breathe for yourself. Remove her. Remove her. Remove her. Remove her. Now you gotta go. This budget meeting? anything but typical. Thornton Township residents from several South Suburban communities filled the room and they had lots to say. Because what we're not going to do is we're not going to be homeless behind her raising our taxes. And you were, you were said that you have good business skills, then you should take a look at the budget again. You are a public servant. You serve us. Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard is also the mayor of Dalton. She is the focus of a wide-ranging FBI investigation. She's also being sued by several Dalton employees, current and former. Residents say they're concerning issues with the township's spending and other areas of township government. There are um, so many red flags. People are just so tired of this whole situation with the uh, non, not being transparent. And if for Dalton, I can speak for Dalton, we don't know what's going on with our money at all. Henyard makes $224,000 a year in her township supervisor job. In December, the Board of Trustees passed an ordinance that some called outlandish. It states that if Henyard runs for re-election in 2025 and loses, her successor's salary would drop to only 25000 a year. But a bill passed in Springfield this week would undo that ordinance and make sure a move like this doesn't happen in the future. And that bill did pass in both houses, and right now all it needs is the signature of the governor. And here's what we still don't know tonight, the total amount of the spending plan that was approved. We're still trying to find that number. I'm live in South, South Holland tonight. Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Regina, you. thank you. Second. All right. Um, any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have some concerns, and hopefully I'll get some answers. Um, first off, have we received the $6.8 million? Keep, keep going on your questions. Are you going to answer? Keep going with okay. the because that so, got nothing to do with the bills. So that, that's, 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 that's grant money that out. was already, but okay. So everybody would know that that's the answer because it's not being answered. But on May 3rd, uh, we received the email from Bert, Costanza, and Carberry, which says that uh, we owe them $4,501.27. They've been requesting this since August 23rd, uh, August 28th, 2023. Um, we once again get here. Um, I don't recall them being on the warrant list. So there is an issue that we pick and choose who we're putting on the warrant list, who we're not putting on the warrant list. What really drew my concern was that 
um, someone sent us an email and then we actually spoke to this person on the phone. And the email reads, thanks for your call this morning. Per our conversation, see the attach. Uh, this engineering firm was hired and has a proposal signed by Mr. Freeman. Uh, his invoice number is 1092. He is saying that we owe him $7,482. So, of course, I asked what was it in reference to. He said that Mr. Freeman contacted him with the help of Ron Smith, who was the engineer, saying that they needed a proposal for 15022 Lincoln. Now, I'm concerned because 15022 Lincoln is not our property to my knowledge. So, why would we be paying a bill? for $7,482. I do know that as being a village that we do have to go through proper protocols and we don't have certified people to do this. But at the reading, it says my email to the engineer on record on 11-21-2023 indicating our findings and concerns with the request for missing information or corrected drawings to be sent. A letter of our architect indicate numerous deficient items I highlighted, I highlighted for some of your review. The letter of our mechanical engineer indicating deficiency in items for your review. Again, we strongly recommend the construction stop immediately until such time these items are addressed by our architect on record. Now, I'm concerned because the man keep calling about his money and it's never been on the warrant list, but I'm more concerned that that beautiful big building at 15022 is not structurally sound because there's a 12 page report that says there are all these issues. So my question, and this is discussion, is somebody please call this man about his $7,000, which I don't understand why the owner would not be paying for this. And then what are we doing in reference to all of these? Has anybody followed up about all of these concerns about that property? Thank you for your concern. Anything else? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, y'all got the answer right there. So y'all know what's going on. All right. Anything else? Yes. All right, All right go ahead. Um, well, when we discuss the bills, um, I just heard you mention a, a few things earlier. And I, I think that even though we've been saying this for months, um, since you'll continue to say what you're going to say, I'm a, I guess I should continue to tell the residents the truth. Um, when we talk about our financial state, it's sad. You know, the things that I could tell you would scare you as a resident in regards to the things that the people who are over the day-to-day -day operation, the decisions that they make, the, the fact that they do not prioritize this spending, and then they come up here and say, hey, vote for this, vote for that. I found it quite interesting that we have our mayor that just sat up here and said, oh, um, do you want receipts for the taxes? I'll put it on Snapchat. I found that particularly interesting considering that we've been asking for financials for months. Put that on Snapchat for us, please. You, we have $4 million in checks that the board have approved that have not been dispersed. The checks are on someone's desk. Whose desk? We do not know. So when we are, when we continue to act for financials, when we make decisions, it's just responsible. You know, we were elected to do a job and that's what we're here to do. We keep saying, hey, this spending is getting out of control. We've been saying that for months. You have Trustee Belcher just set up here and ask, hey, if we're making decisions on voting for the bills, uh, could someone tell us about the $6.8 million grant? We didn't receive an answer. But yet, we're told that we're, the bag is being here. The bag is present, but the bag is empty, guys. It's empty. We have, she, she stated, the public works. For months, Trustee House has been stating, hey, you know, we, we have to watch our spending. We have to prioritize the spending because we know that pay arts are due for public works and police. It's coming, it's coming. You have an administration that set up here months ago and said, oh, in April, 
we're going to make sure that you all are reimbursed because you all do such a great job for the village. And we want to make sure that we take great care of you because we love you so much. But yet, I'm receiving calls saying that they've only received one third of their money. So either we have the money or we do not. And it's extremely important that we realize that we do not have the money. If, and in regards to the financials, if we had the money and if they were providing us, because they just say, oh, well, they, we provide you with the financials, or they said we don't, and how do they know that we're in a deficit? Well, if we were provided with the information, there would be no reason for those people to be coming at our, to our door requesting the information that they've already mysteriously provided us with. So I'm going to say when we make financial decisions, it's not to sit here and argue, it's not to go back and forth, but it is to let the residents know that we don't have it. All of these services that you all need, we have to have some money to be able to provide you with those services. And it would just be totally irresponsible for us to continue to vote for things, negligent things. And yeah, we have not, we don't even know the village's financial true state. We just know it's $4 million on someone's desk. So thank you residents. Um, I, I hope that you have the information that you have been asking for in, in, in regards to where's the information? Where are we going with this? Why, why are they not approving these items? Thank you. That's funny that now it's four million. Y'all said it was seven million. I told you your math ain't math. She, she said it was four million dollars worth of checks. Let, Thank let you. me answer. She don't know. She I can't read. Really. If you want to hear my answer, that's funny that now it's four million. Y'all said it was seven million. I told you your math ain't math. She, she said it was four million dollars worth of checks. Let, Thank let you. me answer. She don't know. She I can't read. Really. If you want to hear my answer, as it relates to the stuff that Trustee Belcher just stated. You guys have to stop coming here to grandstand. If you feel something's wrong, you guys can reach out and then you can talk to the administration that deals with the day to day as it relates to anything you're claiming. It's plenty of times you guys have sat here at a meeting. Please, be, please quiet down for one second. Let quiet, please. Plenty of times you guys have came to a meeting and had misinformation, misleading information. You guys have sat up here and said people said that you didn't pay them. It never was one of our vendors. So I don't entertain the stuff that y'all come up here and just say just because you want to say it for the media, for the residents, and there's no truth to it, no facts to it. And again, if you guys want to have an adult conversation with me, you know my number, you know what I live, you know all of that, Belcher. You guys can call yeah. me, but you don't. Hold on. Go but ahead. you don't call. Go you guys want to come here and put ahead. on a show for what? We Go still ahead. live here no matter what's going on in our neighborhood. For instance, it's a couple things y'all took off the warrant list that y'all need to put back on the warrant list. Y'all talk about y'all want to help the residents. If you want to help the residents, then help them. Why aren't y'all paying for concrete? So when they got a water main break, how do they pour concrete down? How do they fix it? You because they got to call a company out. out they got to call a company out to fix it. But these are the problems that fall on my desk when y'all don't do what y'all supposed to do. And then the residents call me to fix it when y'all said no at a board meeting. Because at the end of the day, it still got to get fixed. Mm -hmm. And that's what y'all fell to realize. No matter what they say up here, y'all going to call me the mayor. And you'll say, Mayor, um, I have a I have a water main, but y'all going to call me the mayor. And you'll say, call me the mayor. And you'll say, Mayor, um, I have a I have a water main break. Can you fix it? You don't want to hear that. When it was Thanksgiving, and y'all water was out because it was a water main break. Y'all had to call them. You called Mary and you to come and fix because you was cooking your dinner. So all I'm saying to you is when they say no, I say yes. Because the mayor. And you'll say because at the end of the day, it's a service. People move to communities for services. And when they don't get the services, why do you want to live in that community? People go and we brag about other people's community because of what they have, what they offer to the, the people. You will want to raise a kid in this town if you cannot have things that the kid needs, such as running water, such as fixing a water main break, such as a, a playground set where you can actually go play with no graffiti on it and not a broken slide. We don't have this in our community. Y'all have a, a uh, tennis court that been broke down forever. They can't even go be uh, Serena now. They can't even go play. They can't do nothing because we don't care. We fight over the wrong stuff. We fight over crumbs. It's a bigger picture, and y'all got to see that. Y'all got to understand y'all work and know what it is and know what we want to do instead of just fighting and trying to tear each other down. Oh, let me say this. Let me call them people. Let me do this. Okay, it could go both ways, but we're not doing that. All I'm saying is let's fix it. We got concrete on that y'all just took off. We got the pool on that. Them kids been asking to swim since last year. 
I've been asking y'all to fix that pool since last year. Every time we put it up, y'all pull it off the wall list. So what? The kids can't swim? How we got a swimming pool in our backyard? When y'all know the black and brown kids, that's the number one thing. They cannot swim. So why would we not have that in our backyard? Why we got to go elsewhere and spend money to give our kids swimming lessons? These are the problems. Fire you pools. Order. You're out of order, man. So why, why you're we, out of order. Do we shouldn't have to do that. The whole point of all of this is to build the community up, not tear each other down. That is the point of this. And it's sad because you guys ran on my ticket, both of y'all, Trustee yeah. Belcher and Trustee House. Both yeah. y'all did. And when you ran on my ticket, y'all ran on my vision. My vision is to fix our community. The so vision wasn't to rob the city. The vision wasn't for the FBI. The vision wasn't for you to steal all the money. So don't talk about the vision. You know that is defamation that you're talking about. You know that is defamation that you're talking about. Don't talk about the vision. Tell me what you're talking about. Don't talk about the vision. Tell me what you're talking about. Don't talk about the vision. Tell me what you're talking about. Okay, we're voting on the AP warrant list for May 6th with the amended motions with the exceptions that Trustee House mentioned. Trustee Norwood. Hi. Trustee Stan Brown. No. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Okay, next on the agenda is new business. Um, motion to terminate. <laughs> Contract with Otis, Murphy, Frazier, and McGrath, LTD, as Legislative Council for the Board of Trustees. I placed this on here several times. I put it on here every single board meeting, and I will continue to because they are the ones that's coming in our community and robbing our communities blind. People have to wake up. They have tried to take money out of our accounts several different ways, from the insurance companies to telling us that we had to give them contracts for work in our village. They is not, and I will repeat, you are not the council you are legislative council for the board your job is to write laws for them that y'all don't do but y'all write laws against me that don't make no sense but i want people to know what's going on in our community and understand the money grab before you all this is happening and put before you because it ain't nothing but a money grab by 
that law firm right there, which is Otis and Stirk and Frazier. That's the people that's trying to take the money from our village. So I wish that why we the man next to us sit with a Bentley truck and then keep going and move forward. That's all we want to happen and uh, do better with our community. So I put that on there and I'm always saying my little statement and that's my statement for the record. So next on the agenda is a motion to approve uh, the purchase of five uh, residential properties, one commercial property from the Cook County yes. Land Bank. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion and second? Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. We wouldn't trust you to buy penny candy. If you think we're about to let you buy properties, we wouldn't trust you to buy penny candy. If you think we're about to let you buy properties, I could care less. You pick your vote. Choose what you want. This is we, again. The village of Dalton is not in the real estate business. We're not buying no properties. Okay, then why y'all motion the second? Then don't motion the second. That, that, we that, had a discussion because we want the people to know why we're not. Because you would get up here and lie too. and be like, they don't want to buy the properties and they don't want to spend no money. So we motion and second, like we can do in Robert's News order and discussion. The discussion is we don't trust you to buy penny candy. And no, we're not buying no property because the village of Dalton is not in the business of property. Y'all done already stole about 60 houses so ain't nobody gonna deal with you buying no property so that's the end of my discussion i second that motion okay that's so you know for the records is i tell y'all to go to classes go to conference learn yeah. Meanwhile, back here on our little corner of the planet, we have a finite number of waking hours, a finite number of dollars, and about 150 employees to help distribute those dollars between about 160,000 citizens. Should we listen to someone who believes she deserves more of those dollars than anyone else because God chose her to be above us? God could have sent her to our planet because he couldn't find enough locusts. We are the operational truth when we listen to each other and ignore your time lies is up. and work together to respond to each other's threats. Um, Tiffany Henry's boyfriend, who is married, which is unethical, uh, Kamal Woods was sitting right there watching him from the whole time that he was speaking. And go to classes, go to conference, learn. The way it works as it relates to a property, for those that do want to know how it works, is the board has to take the property in. The board is the one that's over the property here in our village. So she is not so naive to the fact that I'm not naive. Know that she want to say, don't trust me. It don't work that way. The board is the one. Calm down, please. Quiet, please. To take property in. Yeah. So all we do is quiet, please. for you guys to see it, know it, understand it. And it's up to you to take it or not. If you don't take it, it's so be. Uh, uh, next on agenda is executive session. Is there a motion going closed session? Oh. Is there a motion going closed session? I'm motion going executive session. Is there a second? Second. Okay, then motion and second. Please call the road to go on closed session. Hello, everyone. I'm Melanie Youngsma with the Lansing Journal, sitting here with Josh Bootsma, our managing editor. Hello. It is May of 2024, and we want to provide what we think will be a helpful chronology yes. of the Tiffany Henyard timeline. Yes, specifically yeah. Thornton Township right. timeline of uh, when she became supervisor of Thornton Township to where we're at now. Right. Uh, we think this will be helpful. Yeah. It's been helpful for us to review it. We Absolutely. became aware of things that we weren't originally, so uh, stick with us through this video. We're going to start at the beginning, which is not where most people think it is. The story be actually begins on January 3 of 2022, right. which is the day that then Supervisor Frank Zuccarelli passed away right. unexpectedly. Yes, we were notified of that on that day, and we were able to talk to folks in the know and 
publish a story about that on the same day. Uh, he had been a truly a, a, a real figure in the South Suburbs for a very long time. Right. And that is a significant part of the story because that set in motion everything that happened afterward. Right. Because the supervisor passed away, an appointment had to be made to fill his remaining term. Right. So it was up to the trustees at that time to meet and um, put forth candidates and arrive at a decision about who would fill Supervisor Zuccarelli's term. That's right. That brings us to our next story, Melanie, published on March 1, 2022. Headline, Confusion Marks the Attempted Appointment of Zuccarelli Replacement. This is a story that you wrote. Yeah, I was at this meeting, and this was, I think, the fifth or sixth meeting that the trustees had gone through since Frank's passing. And they still had not managed to, to come up with a recommended replacement that they could all agree on. Yeah. And there is a deadline for this. Yeah. Um, I think they had 60 days, and they were aware of this deadline, and still things went right up to, to the deadline. That's right. So on March 1, they tried again to put forth nominations and agree, and um, the whole meeting was very confusing, and nothing came out of it. The next meeting happened on March 3. That's right. Uh, 48 hours notice is required whenever you have a public meeting, and so uh, the meeting couldn't start until, I think, 10.30 or 10.55 yeah. uh, in order to fulfill that 48-hour requirement and still accomplish the goal of appointing a supervisor before the midnight deadline. On May, on March 3. So, yes, yeah, so it started at 10.55. They had exactly an hour and five minutes to appoint a new supervisor because if they didn't, it would go to a, um, a the larger township public at right. large would vote for who they wanted to be the next supervisor. And it was chaos. Yeah. And out of that, finally, the ninth person nominated was Tiffany Henyard. 11.48 p.m., Trustee Gonzalez nominated Tiffany Henyard, and we have that video. I believe we are the only video that's been published by the media of that moment, and we'll show it to you. So I nominate uh, Tiffany Hanyard for the Township Supervisor. You all are making a mockery out of this one. This is not a joke. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Gray Everett? Yes. <laughs> Security, yeah, security. And she has to sign the warrant, and then she's got to take the oath in nine minutes. Let's go. Nine minutes left. And not only that, but we, I was able to, um, ask the newly appointed supervisor Henyard, and she'd just been sworn in and I asked, can I ask you a couple of questions? Josh so I got the interview. Stood there with my camera and she answered some of my questions. She was very excited. You've been voted the, the Thor Thornton Township Supervisor. How do you feel right now? Oh man, I'm overjoyed. I may didn't see it coming. I yeah. love it. That means that I am truly blessed and everyone loves me. I, I love so, them. Thank you. It yeah. seemed like a surprise to everyone in the room, a surprise to you as well? Yes. Okay. See, I'm still trembling. Like, yeah. yes. Some people, especially on YouTube and other commenters are, commenters are are sort of blaming the people for electing Tiffany mm -hmm. Henyard. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out that it was not the people who elected her. It was this process put in place, and right. it was the trustees who eventually elected Tiffany or appointed Tiffany to fulfill Frank's role. 
That's correct. And that's the way the system is set up. Uh, the trustees did not want it to go to the people. Correct. For whatever reason. <clears throat> but, yeah, don't blame the people. Right, right. The, Tiffany Henyard was has never been elected as the supervisor of Thornton Township. She right. was appointed to that position by the process. We attended her first meeting that she she led the Thornton the Thornton Township Board mm -hmm. and we reported on that. At that at that first board meeting, you were there, you wrote the story out of it. One thing there are just some quotes that given what has happened in the last two and a half years mm -hmm. that really stand out from early on. So I want to read one of those quotes. Um, this is Supervisor Henyard. I pledge to the residents of Thornton Township, the elected officials, the board of trustees and the entire staff that we will work hard and have an honest and responsible fiscal year. I will always keep the people first. I was known as the people's trustee, now I'm the people's mayor, and even now I am the people's supervisor. So thank you again. So we fast forward to the, uh, the second meeting with Supervisor Henyard as the township supervisor, and the notable thing about that meeting, among a few other things, is that she fired two people. Um, one was in the Human Resources Department, and one was uh, Stephanie, that was Jessica Jones in the Human Resources Department. And the other was Stephanie Wiedemann, who was the former executive assistant to uh, Frank Zuccarelli. Um, Stephanie had been part of the township for a very, very long time and was seen, according to Stephanie, was seen by Tiffany Hanyard as a, as a critic, as asking too many questions. Mm -hmm. And there was just a lot of confusion and uncertainty about, wow, why are we fired? The communication was unclear. So early on, there were already some, some red flags. That was at meeting number two Correct. that Supervisor Henyard led. Right. Yeah, so the Lansing Journal continued showing up. We went to the annual meeting that year of Thornton Township. We reported on that. Um, we went to township board meetings, we reported on the, uh, the bills that were being discussed, financial decisions that were being made, um, just, just trying to be present, just trying to observe and report. Right. There was one particular um, issue with the, you know, previous administration had gone to this place called Eaglewood Resort and Spa and had a, had a, a large bill for that occasion, and we can't speak to that at all. What they did there. Or, um, but it is worth noting that the trustees brought that up. Supervisor Henyard spoke out against that choice for the, the staff to spend taxpayer dollars, and we quoted her, and I want to read that right now, which in hindsight is an interesting quote from <laughs> Supervisor Henyard. She said, I'm totally for a retreat, but I'm not for using taxpayer dollars to do personal things such as spas. Some members here use the money to do spas for their employees. We do not know anything about anyone using taxpayer dollars for spas. That's a big no-no, a big red flag, and that will not be condoned under my watch as your supervisor. So she's on the record as pretty explicitly it. calling out the fact that we're not going to be using taxpayer dollars for any sort of personal, personal. experience. Good to know. Yep. Yeah, and so then we, we shared a few stories just about sort of ordinary township business. We, we wanted to cover the township in the same way that we cover our village, show right. up at meetings and just report what happens. So several of our stories over the next few weeks were pretty ordinary. Yeah. Days in the park. Yeah. Um, we'd let people know when upcoming events were happening. Right. Uh, Quentin Arthur was our reporter at that time. He was going to the, Th the Thornton Township meetings and just letting people know what, de what decisions were being made and what events were being planned. That's right. So we were not always there. I mean, sometimes there was drama happening and sometimes there was not. And we were there either way. Either way. Because we wanted to be there to report on it. So that brings us to September 29, 2022. We published a story about a Thornton Township board meeting during which tensions ran high and... Uh, I don't really need to say too much about this, Melanie. Um, you can read the story that we'll link to below. Uh, I'll let the video kind of speak for itself. Out of order. Stop. Stop. Who are you? This is public comment. Who are you? You will be escorted no, out of town on a key disruption yeah. emergency. Yeah. 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 This is public comment. Are you really yeah. going to do that? Please stop. Please stop. It is now time for Ms. Shamika Atkins to speak. Please. Ms. Atkins. Okay. Ms. Atkins, wait patiently for everyone to get to their seat. Please let her speak, please. So all of that happened in, in 2022. It was 2023 when the first mental health referendum mm -hmm. was um, announced to appear on the ballot. That's right. Quentin Arthur was at that meeting and he reported on that. That's right. And we're going to get 
that it later appeared in, again in 2024. We're going to summarize all that a little bit later on in this video to kind of keep it all condensed into one topic. All right, on April 13 of 2023, we published a story about the Thornton Township annual meeting. And those are usually pretty big meetings and people have elector cards that they can raise to you know, approve the bills and things. And I won't get into the details of how the annual meetings run, but um, something that was notable about this annual meeting is that there was the first time in my memory that some larger broadcast media was present. Um, Ted Slowick from the Daily South Town had been a consistent presence at Dalton meetings and Thornton Township meetings. Dane Placco of Fox 32, as well as some Better Government Association reporters, approached her after the meeting. She spoke for just a little bit and quickly kind of skirted around the reporters and made her way upstairs, and we have video of that. Hey, Keith! Keith! So they, those same reporters from the Better Government Association and Fox 32 uh, wrote a story about the Springfield, what they called a Springfield Joy Ride in their headline and the big spending that accompanied it. And because the Better Government Association has the copyright agreement or something, we were able to republish their story. They encouraged us to do so, actually. And so we got some really good um, kind of a deep dive from the Better Government Association in collaboration with Fox 32. And you can read that full thing below. Another elected official in Thornton Township is the assessor, who currently is Cassandra Elston. She's an elected official. She's elected by the people. She works in the same office with Tiffany Henyard, another elected official. And so it was surprising for us to learn that <laughs> that Supervisor Henyard had locked Assessor Elston out of her office at the Thornton Township headquarters building. You can do anything you want to pretty much say or do to me, it's okay. But when you come between me and the taxpayers and the job that they voted me in to do, I have a problem with that. So what we know what happened yesterday, according to the Fox 32 report and talking with uh, Cassandra Elston, is that when she arrived at her office yesterday, her specific office was locked. Commons table in the area is not the place for all of those filled out forms. We have confidential, sensitive papers that were in a common area. This morning, some of those documents were gone. Did anyone move any of this? I didn't touch we, we didn't touch anything. Okay, so this was moved yesterday. There were stacks here, so someone's gone through it. And then, Josh, you were at the follow-up meeting where the yeah. Thornton Township Board actually voted to declare Assessor Elston absent from her duties. Right, so I was at that meeting, and that was a topic of discussion. That was the phrase, to vote her absent from her duties, which kind of seemed pretty ridiculous to a lot of people present at that meeting. So it was, it was very confusing. And here's what here's Keith Freeman, who's a high-ranking official in Thornton Township, here's his version from the township perspective of what happened. So to set this record straight, um, Supervisor Henyard in no way uh, removed the assessor from her office. The supervisor has, uh, excuse me, the assessor has access to the assessor's office, which is located on this side of the building. Uh, she has a key fob that gets her in her office. Her, stuff, her office was relocated to an area so that we can take care of some business in her office area. Um, she did not call and ask us why she was being relocated. She did not call and ask us um, any information about that. There were no files left out. All of the files were locked up. Um, whoever took the files out, you know, left them on the tables for the media and you know whatever that interview was, uh, that's completely false. So you didn't receive any emails or calls from the assessor? I didn't receive anything from the assessor questioning whether or not 
um, or any any call. What no, I say the past two weeks. No, I hadn't received. I haven't spoken. No to, call, no emails. I have not spoken to the assessor at all. Well, that's not what I'm asking. Did you receive any emails? Okay, or calls he, he answered the question. We're not going to answer the question. We're not. You're, you're done. Done. Thank you. No, I still, I still have, have questions. You, you can ask. Okay. Well, I'm but not, he asked. He's he not answering them. Then? Okay. He, so, asked, he asked. He asked. Did you receive any calls or emails? I have not. Part of that same video clip um, of that explanation is a, is a bit about um, Tiffany Henyard criticizing the media for not covering Thornton Township correctly, specifically saying we only come for the bad stuff and not for the good stuff. We'll show you that. And news, stop writing about me and y'all ain't got y'all facts. Y'all wrote that I removed her from office and I did no such thing. I did not lock her out of no office. I don't even have a dispute with that lady. So I wish people stopped lying on my name. And I hope y'all write that. That's for your record when you do write this article about me because you only come here for the mess. You guys do not come here for anything positive we've done that has been done in this township, such as we got a whole surplus when there's always been a deficit here in the township. Y'all didn't write that, right? And then when y'all want to know the truth about the township, y'all come <coughs> here bring my line about the theft that's going on at the township before I became this supervisor. But y'all not writing about none of that stuff. So stop. Keith, you got the floor. Eight days after she made that critique of the Lansing Journal, um, we, Quentin Arthur, who is our township report at the time, published a story about 70 student scholarships being awarded by Thornton Township, and he kind of detailed some of what those scholarships were about, and just Tiffany Henry has con continued to come back to this theme of the media doesn't cover Thornton Township fairly or not cover the good things, and as we kind of said before, our goal is to just cover the township, right. not cover the good or the bad, we're there to cover what is newsworthy it's just information in Thornton Township. And I think this Quentin story about the scholarships is a good example of us doing that. So the mid-August meeting of the Thornton Township Board was unique in that this was the first time that I know that the public was actually denied entrance to witness the meeting. I was allowed to come in because I was a member of the media. There were some other folks on the inside of the boardroom. Um, a lot of them were involved with the township. And so I very much felt like... <laughs> I very Alone. much felt like I was the only one on the outside group. I'll quote a couple things that she said here. Um, well, I reported that at least 15 times during the 33-minute board meeting, she alluded to being unfairly written about. Um, she said, I would appreciate if people stop writing negative stuff about the township and write about all the good that we do here in the township. We made that point earlier. She later added, write the stuff that's the truth, not the mess and the gossip. She also said, God don't make no mistakes. He put the right person here that he knew was going to do the work and take the lashes and bear the strength to keep going and doing it all. He put the right person here. So that's among many comments that she had. So that August story was our last story of 2023, and we, we didn't publish a lot of Thornton Township news between then and January, and there were a couple of reasons for that. Mm. For one, many of those meetings were canceled. Mm. or rescheduled at yeah. the last minute. Sure. And we couldn't always make it to the rescheduled meeting. And it was just difficult to get communication from Thornton Township and to cover them consistently. Right. Um, also, our reporter who was assigned to Thornton Township, Quentin Arthur, at that time um, signed up for classes, wanted to continue his education, so he became less available right. for that kind of coverage. Mm -hmm. So that affected our ability as well. So in January of 2024, we decided to to um, explain that and explain why we hadn't been covering Thornton Township. So that was one of our weekly videos. Right, and we titled that, Let's Talk About Thornton Township. Another part of that post that we put together was uh, some clips that you took at a township talk. Yeah, township talks are not official government meetings, uh, public meetings. They are more of a marketing meeting that mm -hmm. the um, township puts on so that Thornton Township residents can come and ask questions and meet Learn about the what's different, going on. Yeah. Yeah, meet yeah. different personnel. Uh, so I went to one and shot some video and a lot of interesting things were said. I understand why we can't help each other, why we can't put our heads together and help one another, why we can't band together at this time, at this moment. This is going to be Black History Month, right? Y'all all say Martin Luther King had a dream, but guess what? I am the dream. So now I need you guys to stand with me 
A lot of strange things were happening in early 2024. That's right. On February the 13th, I uh, came to the Thornton Township Hall expecting to report on a board meeting. And I was told by a security guard that I was, along with everyone else who was there from the public, a handful of people had to go downstairs. And when I went downstairs, um, there was no audio feed. And there was a very faint audio at one point that lasted maybe for 30 seconds. You couldn't really hear much. And before we even knew it, the people downstairs, the meeting had ended. It was apparently a four-minute meeting. And it was... For all intents and purposes, it was inaccessible to the public. The public and the media were denied access. So you guys were kept in the cellar. Correct. While this short little meeting happened. That is correct. And nobody knows exactly what happened at that meeting. Right. And talking with uh, Trustee Chris Gonzalez afterwards, he told me it was pretty basic. You know, the approval of the bills. There wasn't really anything that required discussion. And so in four minutes, they were in and out. But definitely not a good look for, I mean, required by law to have an open meeting accessible in COVID times. There were some accommodations for if you wanted to hold a meeting, you know, and it was live streamed downstairs or something, but that has expired because the emergency order has expired for the COVID pandemic. And not only that, but public comment required by law. People need to be able to comment. Public needs to be able to comment. And that was inaccessible for the members of the public that were there. We asked one of our freelance reporters, Kenise Jordan, who is great, to attend a Thornton Township Black History Month celebration. A public event. Not a politically oriented event, as far as we knew. Um, and she had a tough experience getting in there. In fact, she was denied access to that because she was a member of the media. She was told that she needed to sign a non-disclosure agreement, that she, a member of the media whose job it is to report, could not disclose what it was that she saw going on at this Black History Month celebration. So she called me after she got back to the car and we talked about what she'd experienced and I said, I think this is a story in itself. And we published that story on February 26, 2024. Um, just a really kind of bald-faced example of, of Supervisor Henyard's promise of come to the good things, there's so much good going on that we want to tell you about. When we show up to report on it, we were denied access. So that's what happened to our reporter, and then at the next meeting that you attended, we heard this. Because y'all don't want to do the research, y'all keep listening to people, and no one's showing you fact. They keep telling you fiction, fake story, fake news, like for real, stop. But go check, guys, if you really want to know the truth, so you can understand what it is that we're fighting over. Um, I'm basically fighting against the devil, the evil spirits. I'm the good spirit, they, they, they the evil spirit, because I never see nobody try to tear down people this much. We did have a chance to talk to Thornton Township Trustee Chris Gonzalez. He's been the only one of the administration willing to speak with us and other media. He's the one who actually nominated Tiffany Henyard to the right. position, which led to her getting appointed. Right. And just wanted to get his take on, on that. So we asked him about it. Put us in Chris Gonzalez's mind 12 minutes before midnight. What was your thinking in nominating her after this long process? I mean, just as a whole, um, I just felt that um, I was hoping we could get somebody that was a little bit younger for the role. Um, I felt it was time that you know, maybe possibly, and I mean, I wasn't like honed in on that, but you know, that um, you know, a woman. You know, I just thought mm -hmm. that that would be somebody you know that was a little bit younger, a woman. Um, so that's kind of where I was. Um, I be honest, I really didn't know at that time a whole lot of the, you know, that there was already some controversy and things like that, a little bit of, that was going in on in Dalton, is, is Dalton, you know, yeah. say. Sure. So I didn't really know about that. And that was also something that, I mean, obviously there, you know, just on the surface, there was a little bit experience there. Mm. You know, she'd been a trustee, you know, mm -hmm. just became mayor. Um, kind of a town that you might have had as a base as far as just like, you know, once again, coming from that there might be some experience and things like that there. Yeah. She went straight to Frank's office and, you know, sat in the chair and, but, and you know, but, and she just kept basically yelling, what are they going to think now? What are they going to say now? Speaking of the Dalton trustees, because oh. I guess, like I said, there was already a rift and I didn't know that. So I'm thinking in my, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? And mm -hmm. then, so I went to Keith on the side and I said, what is she talking about? I said, is the board against her in Dalton? And he said, yeah. 
And I said, who? He's like, everybody. And he was like proud of it. And at that time, I mean, I already was like, what did I do? If you haven't seen that full video with Chris Gonzalez, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there that we definitely uh, recommend that you watch. One of the other topics that we talked to him about in that video was the, at the time of shooting it, there was an upcoming mental health referendum that we had asked him his opinion on. Right. This was the same referendum, essentially, that had been on the ballot a year earlier. And right. here it was being brought back again. And specifically, the township levy an annual tax not to exceed 0.15% for purposes of providing community mental health facilities and services. Um, so that was voted down in 2023 um, with 51.24% voting against and 48.76% voting for. Close. Uh, very close. Um, this year, however, the was much more decisive. It was 61.84% voting against and 38.16% voting for. Both times, local uh, mayors and legislators put attached their names and signed a letter of non-support saying that they didn't believe that Lansing's mayor was one of them, Mayor Patty Item, and a lot of other mayors in the township saying they didn't believe this was the best way to invest or prioritize mental health support. One of the things that was new in this letter in 2024 was this uh, paragraph here. We wish to avoid placing further hardship on homeowners, but we also believe, given recent news media and law enforcement inquiries regarding possible misappropriation of taxpayer dollars, that to request more of township taxpayers' hard-earned money is at best ill-advised. Yeah, so the referendum did get voted down, and uh, here was Supervisor Henry's response to that. And as it relates to the referendum question, um, the thing that the gentleman spoke about, it's a shame that people are so brainwashed, hoodwinked, and led astray that they will sit here and say, oh, I'm glad we voted down. That's a shame. I feel bad for you. That all happened in March, and then in April is the annual meeting of Thornton Township, and Josh and I were both there, as was the Homewood Flossmoor Chronicle and several other media members. Yep. One of the things that was significant about this year's annual meeting was the power dynamic between the elected officials, specifically Supervisor Henyard, the appointed official, mm. and the people of Thornton Township. People came out to that meeting and people spoke during public comment. People asked questions. People came as prepared as they could, yeah. although information was hard to, hard to get. Right. But they were there. To, because they wanted to participate in government. So they were pushing back against Supervisor Henry. She was pushing back against them. I was proud of the community and the way they showed up and the way they spoke up. So it seemed like nothing was happening. And then finally things started to happen. In just the last month, we've definitely seen some movement. So on mid-April, we published about Thornton Township official Keith Freeman indicted for bankruptcy fraud. Um, there's an 11-page indictment, which you can read in the uh, article linked below. There's definitely, according to the, the lawsuit, which admittedly, you know, that's one side of the story, there's a lot of, of fraud that's been happening with Keith Freeman with regard to these, his different um, organizations and lying about his income and saying that he wasn't getting a paycheck from someone and, you know, moving money to a different bank account and not revealing that when he declared for bankruptcy, a lot of different stuff tied up in it. Shady. Shady stuff, yeah. Second example of that is just recently, on uh, May 12, we posted about federal subpoenas of Thornton Township focus on Tiffany Henyard. And you can read those full documents uh, that's linked in our story. Um, it's really a, a slew of documents. And so with the subpoena, on May 20th, a custodian of records from Thornton Township is required by law to come downtown to the federal courthouse and um, deliver these documents and also appear before the grand jury. Um, unfortunately, grand jury proceedings are happen behind closed doors, so we won't be able to, to be there and document any of it. Um, but this is this is a big deal, and this a lot of these documents focus on a lot of the things that people have had questions on mm -hmm. the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation. Um, you know, these people who are getting paychecks and it's, what exactly are they for? Um, so this is, this is the first step in like an investigation like this saying, yeah. we need all these documents to know what exactly we think any potential charges could be or something like right. that. 
So the feds are involved now. The feds are involved, big and time. So a lot of people are, are relieved to finally see some action being taken. That's right. So thank you for sticking with us through this whole summary. Even though yeah. it's a summary, it's been pretty long. It sure has. <laughs> but yeah, it's a two-year story. And one thing I want to leave our readers with is just the assurance that the Lansing Journal plans to be here mm. even after all of this drama dies down. It is important that we are covering the sensational stuff, but we also want our community and the nation to know that that's not the whole story of our community. So thank you for watching and reading not just the sensational stuff. Thank That's you right. for reading the daily yeah. stories of life in our community right. and for supporting this local newspaper. Absolutely. And thanks for watching today. We will see you for anything else that happens at the township and uh, we will see you next week. This is my favorite Tiffany Henyard interview. Here we go. I want the receipts and to know the purpose. I do not handle anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. Did, did what you is that? No comment. Did you know? You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? This administration is shameful. Y'all are a disgrace. We're watching the fall of this administration. Yeah, WGN Investigates has obtained or reviewed subpoenas the FBI served to Thornton Township and Dalton. They serve as a roadmap to the ongoing federal investigation. They seek payment and expense records for Tiffany Henyard, as well as her boyfriend, who runs a violence prevention program for the township. Also named Henyard's top aide, Dalton's acting police chief, along with four village and township trustees and two of Henyard's relatives who are on the government payroll. They'll turn up more and more information. They'll turn up more leads. They may turn up more witnesses. They may find a cooperator. They may find an informant, all which will benefit the investigation tremendously. But based on what we know now, if you're Tiffany Henyard, how are you feeling? I would be nervous. GN Investigates has reported she and her team frequently travel first class and have stayed at high-end hotels that cost in the past year more than $102,000. The FBI wants the receipts and to know the purpose. Dalton also comes with a legal cost to taxpayers. Henyard's attorney recently notified the board he was withdrawing from defending the village in 21 cases because Henyard's opponents have refused to pay his bills. Mayor Henyard is on an island of lawlessness and is just doing whatever she thinks will benefit her uh, personally and politically. The vision wasn't to rob the city. Late last year, I asked the self-proclaimed super mayor whether she might be the problem. You often point out you are the leader of Dalton. At what point is this dysfunction a reflection on your leadership? When I replace my board. Isn't asked about herself and she goes, well, when I replace my board, meaning all of them out there. Part of being a leader, learning how to work with others. I mean, this is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Yes, but when other people are the puppet masters and they're the puppets, this is the show you get. But as you can see, progress is still being made in the village of Dalton. What a spin. Oh, what a spin. I don't care what you say. She says stuff. She does. She says stuff. Oh, this is wild. The stuff that comes out of her mouth, you're like, mm, yeah, mm, not so much. Mm, no, no, no. I can't really get behind you here, Tiffany. All right, let's get into the guts of the matter. Guts of the matter is got a bunch of subpoenas. FBI has just been sending out subpoena after subpoena after subpoena. Now we're kind of figuring out, we're honing in on who those subpoenas and what information they might be looking for. Subpoenas reveal Tiffany Henyard and her allies are FBI focused. It's Tiffany. I mean, we knew this. It's not 
the entire township of Thornton. It's not the village of Dalton itself. It's individuals who have been tasked with running said village and township. But yeah, the FBI is going, ah, we're going to need to see some of your paperwork. I need you to come in on Saturday. A woman who portrayed herself as the most powerful politician in the South, in the South suburbs, is the focus of a wide ranging FBI investigation whose focus has grown to include people close to her politically and personally. Subpoenas served in recent weeks to the two municipalities led by Tiffany Henyard. Number one, the village of Dalton, which she is the mayor, and Thornton Township reveal federal agents are investigating many of the same concerns the WGN investigates as reported on in the past year. Now, the individual that we saw interviewing, that was the WGN, that was Ben Bradley from WGN, and he's done an amazing job covering this topic. So, Hanyard, <laughs> don't you love it <laughs> when he says, it might be you, and she's like, oh, no, no, it's the puppet master, it's the puppet master. The puppet master is just doing stuff. It's not me. puppet master. She just immediately spends it away from herself. Henyard, her political committee, her cancer charity, her boyfriend, two of her relatives, four trustees who are allies, her deputy police chief, and even her defunct burger business are all named in the subpoenas. The documents demand the Dalton and the township turn over payroll, expense, employment, reimbursement, credit card, travel, and dozens of other records to a grand jury hearing evidence on Monday. Hmm. I don't think this is going to go well. You know, for, for Tiffany and for her associates and for her family members and for the partridge in a pear tree that the FBI is asking for. So you've got shenanigans, folks. These are heavy duty shenanigans that the FBI is saying, you know what? We're going to need to see, we're just going to need a little quick peek see of what you've got going on there because there's all these rumors, there's all this craziness going on. People within the village, people within the township, they are a talking. They're not saying nice things. They're saying, you're going down, you're going to jail. The subpoenas also seek information on the village's permitting and licensing practices. That's an interesting one. And why would that be? Well, it's because it's rumored that Tiffany Henyard, anybody who doesn't agree with her and didn't campaign for her, yeah, they may not be getting their professional business license renewed. Yeah, ixnay on that one there, sport. Yeah, no, you can't, can't have a license. License is no good here. You're out of business. Literally what she's doing. Henyard has been accused of denying permits to people and businesses she deems insufficiently loyal. She is straight up running a, a fiefdom. She is the queen of the fiefdom, and she is going to rain down her terror. Clearly, they've targeted certain individuals in both the village and the township that should be a huge red flag, said retired FBI agent Virginia Wright, who reviewed the subpoenas at the request of WGN investigates. Hey, take a look at these. See what you think. Oh, yeah, not good. Federal prosecutors charged Henyard's top aide in both the village and the township with bankruptcy fraud in April for failing to report his earnings from Dalton. Uh-oh, you didn't declare those earnings. Okay. Keith Freeman remains in both positions despite the charges, which his lawyer may be part of an effort to get him to cooperate with investigators. All right, let's go after him for this, but we're going to tell him that we're not really going to stick him with much time, a little bit of probation. But we'd like to know what you know. Would you please share that with us, Mr. Uh, Keith Freeman? The village of Robbins has also received a subpoena. It's a, a, a nearby village. Received a subpoena related to Freeman's time as an administrator there. An audit obtained by WGN Investigates indicates Freeman received more money than was budgeted while working in Robbins. Mm, okay, more shenanigans. They'll turn up more leads, said retired FBI agent Wright. They may turn up more witnesses. They may find a cooperator. They made an informant. All they they made get uh they may get an informant. All will benefit the investigation tremendously. 
She's just saying, hey, whatever they're looking for, they're going to get additional pieces of information and they're going to go down those roads and hmm, we'll just, this isn't that hard of stuff to track, right? You got expense reports. Hey, where'd you spend your money? Oh, you either have receipts for it or not. They're either legit or they're not. If somebody's putting a focus on that, it's going to be hot, tough to work your way around it. First class, is that is that acceptable? I mean, if you've got, uh, you got a big wig uh, city council from like maybe New York City that has multi, multi, multi-billion dollar budgets, maybe, but Village of Dalton and a township of whatever. Uh, they're like full between four and seven million dollars negative in the budget. Should Tiffany and her cohorts be jetting off to Portland via first class? Who goes to Portland first class? I don't know if she actually did, but Joe, that's one of the places she went. She definitely went to Vegas, and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, unless one of your cohorts, cohorts, um, yeah, woke up in bed with the member of the opposite sex and nobody really knows what's going on. And mm, yeah. Oof. And then allegations of sexual abuse are thrown out. Oof. I mean, this story just keeps a given, right? Tenured is denied wrongdoing and claim concerns about her spending of taxpayer money and allegations of political retaliation are fake news. Interesting. I am reporting on fake news, apparently. Yeah, but those FBI subpoenas, those are not fake news. What are they going after there, Tiffany? Tiff? Can I call you Tiff? They're motivated by race, despite the fact that Dalton trustees have challenged her are also black. Yeah. Yep. Can't make this stuff up, right? You're racist. I'm the same color as you. Doesn't matter. You're racist. <laughs> you should all be ashamed of yourselves because you are all black. You are all black. And you are sitting up here beating and attacking a black woman that's in power. Well, I, I think, Tiff, that the real issue there is that you're a black woman in power that is abusing her position of power. And now the powers that be would like you to open up your books and be you know, translucent and, and just share the information that you have. We need a certain degree of transparency that we haven't been getting especially after that whole what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas thing with the uh, rape allegations. I mean, good Lord, not a good look there, Tiff. Not a good look. Henyard yelled at trustees during a February meeting. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. No, that's, that, that is her speaking, and she is pushing back on some of the rhetoric and some of what she believes to be fake news, when in reality the FBI is saying, we'd like your information. We're going to go after them. Them, 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 and them. And we'll get back to you, Tiff. We'll see. We'll see what we need you for. Neither Henyard nor the $5,000 per month publicity agent she hired a taxpayer expense to represent the village and township responded to a request for comment about the ongoing FBI investigation. That's because the noose is starting to close and it is going to get hairy, folks. And by hairy, I mean shenanigans exposed. To all you clowns that are part of the circus, misery needs company. I pray for you all stop chasing fake news. Mm, yeah, th but this isn't fake. None of this is fake. We don't have to make this up. These are allegations of what you've actually been doing. And we just want to know the truth. So the story is, hey, you spent a whole bunch of money that wasn't yours. You hired a whole bunch of people that were inappropriate. You've had all kinds of business expenses that may or may not have been legit. And then you went to Vegas and then somebody had sex with somebody else and the details are fuzzy. They are hazy at best. But people woke up in bed and went, what happened? What happened? Like I said, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? I'm not sure. We'll just have to find out. Henyard and her entourage have racked up more than $102,000 in travel expenses charged to taxpayers in the past year. Past year. That's according to an analysis of credit card records by WGN Investigates. Records show first-class airfare, a stay at a $9,000 $9, stay at the Four Seasons in Atlanta. That sounds nice. I like that. Company paid. And a $13,000 bill from Marriott Marquis in New York City. All right. Hotels for everyone. Well, room service in there. Was room service on there? I'm sure it was. 
WGN investigates previously reported on a trip to Las Vegas by Hanyard and her alleys that cost the pet taxpayers $26,000. All right, you're going from Chicago and then you're going to Vegas. That is not an expensive flight. 26K. How many people did you take? Did, did, did you take 20? No, you took a handful, right? But then again, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, unless, of course, you know, FBI and their probing is involved. Tenyard's former assistant now accuses Dalton trustee and community activist Andrew Holmes of sexually assaulting her on the trip. This is where it starts to get a little dicey, folks. Doesn't start. It is dicey. Although Holmes has not been criminally charged yet, and he denies the allegations. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I didn't know such thing. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let the these charges, you know, see what we got going on. The FBI investigation is far from the only legal problem in Dalton. The attorney hired by Henyard to defend the village in multiple lawsuits, ranging from police shootings to workers' compensation, claims has withdrawn after Henyard's opponents refused to approve his bills. Yeah, if you're not going to pay my attorney's fees, I'm not your attorney. Next. Right? Attorney Michael Del Galdo told trustees the village may have, have more than $20 million in liability if it fails to defend itself in court. So you got $20 million with an M, liability. You got a sexual assault. You got a rape case. You got all kinds of money being embezzled. Just expenses being paid, first class trips. Meanwhile, back in the village of Dalton, you've got a budget that has gone sideways by somewhere between four and seven million. You can't really tell with the board members in Dalton and the uh, Dalton mayor, Tiffany Henyard, screaming at each other because, man, some of these meetings have just been explosive, right? Explosive. So no one wants to represent the village, Delgado wrote, because bills aren't being paid and it's a tough gig. Hey, you want to go defend Tiffany Henyard? No. (laughs) The FBI subpoena is also demanding billing records related to the Delgado Law Group's representation of Dalton. How much was spent on law fees? The subpoenas help seek similar records from Bert Odison, an attorney who represents the trustees opposed to Henyard. Meanwhile, lawsuits against Dalton continue to stack up. This month, a Dalton police officer filed suit against Henyard in the village, claiming he was passed over for promotion after reporting a fellow officer was writing unwarranted tickets to boost revenue for the village. Do we have Do we have renegade cops in the village of Dalton? Who knows, right? Who knows? Or is this, is this a, a police officer who's reporting somebody who just shouldn't have been doing what they should have been, or maybe they're writing up a few. And then he claims, ah, I got passed over because of that guy over there. When things are in play, you just kind of go for it, right? Who knows with the Passover for promotion. So attorney Pat Walsh represents the officer and three other current and former employees who are suing Henyard and the village, accusing her of misusing her political power. There, is, there are so many storylines going, going on here, just whoosh, 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 left and right. Mayor Henyard is on an island of lawlessness and is doing what she thinks will benefit her personally and politically, rather than following the law and doing what would benefit the village of Dalton and its residents. Mm, those sound like reasonable words, aren't they? Yeah. Now you've got this, you've got this whole laundry list of shenanigans that have already taken place. And it sounds like they're ongoing. Money meant for this spent here. Money don't, we don't know where it went, not accountable. Trips that were taken. You heard her response to the interviewer from WGN. And he's like, Well, did you go to Vegas? Of course I went to Vegas. And he asks her a pointed question and she just sidesteps it just boop just sidesteps it dalton residents have been crowding village board meetings demanding answers and accountability for months if you want to get a good kick just skim through the videotape of the village of dalton uh the the council footage and you will hear some people just going at it i mean they are just mainly council members screaming at the mayor and then the mayor screaming back with 
Yeah. And fake news. You guys are all in on it. Nobody trusts me. You guys got to follow my leadership. She just, you know, goes down all these kind of crazy train responses. This administration is shameful, declared one resident during a public comment section of the meeting. We are all waiting for the fall of this administration, shouted another. In the meantime, in the meantime, what you've got going is <laughs> you've got subpoenas, you've got sexual al- sexual assault allegations, you've got uh, bankruptcy allegations of fraud and bankruptcy. Hey, you didn't report that money. You got this income coming to you. You've just got all of these storylines and the FBI is trying to sort it out through a number of subpoenas. Well, this is not looking good for leadership in in Dalton, village of Dalton. This is not looking good. This is not going to go well at the end. Almost guaranteed, Tiffany Hanyard gets the bump. She gets bumped out of there. They'll have to have some kind of emergency, what, whatever their protocol is for uh, leadership, because there is no way if 10% of the allegations against Tiffany Hanyard and her cohorts are true, she's out of there. She's out of there. Because there's enough charges where you're like, oh, hey now, whoa, wow, really? Oh, yeah, that's not a good one either. How's she going to get out of that one? Don't really know. Does she cop a plea deal? Does she, does she plea to something? Maybe. I mean, didn't she have any advisors say, okay, you want to go down these roads? Here's how we make that appear to be legit. Did nobody inform her there are ways to handle this? that aren't quite so just outright fraudulent? Did, did nobody say anything? And how was, uh, how was this administration expecting that they were going to get away with this? Right? How do you just do all this crazy stuff? I like the trip to Vegas. Ah, it's a business trip. It's an economic development trip. That's literally how they spun it. I'm guessing with, you know, the whole sexual assault charge, they didn't really get into that economic development topic that much. Sounds like it was, um, you know, a bunch of drinking and um, some crazy stuff that happened in Vegas that Tiffany had really hoped would have stayed in Vegas. But when you've got an FBI, multiple FBI subpoenas floating around out there, kind of points you in the direction of where you think you might be headed. And like that map kind of in the video earlier. That indicated, yep, we're going after Tiffany, we're going after her boyfriend, couple of family members, a bunch of people from the board, you know, from the from the village, from from the, you know, all of these entities, and they're fishing. They are fishing for information. And uh, kind of like the 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 interviewer Ben Bradley was doing. He was fishing for information from from Tiffany Henyard. And I think the results that Tiffany gave were very indicative of how this is going to go, which is not well for Tiffany because the responses she gave, if she gave those in court, if she gave those to a judge, mm -mm, not having it, not having it. She would be declared, you are spewing fake news here. We need you to clean up your act. Otherwise, we will have you cited for contempt in court. You got to answer the question. And instead, well, and there's a puppet master and this happens and that happens. You're like, uh, you sound guilty. You sound guilty. I'm not saying she is guilty and I'm not saying any of these charges will stick, but she sounds guilty. Doesn't she? Yeah. And I think that's what vast majority of America is looking at this and going, Oh, she sounds guilty. See how the, see how this goes down. We'll see how these shenanigans play out in the legal system is that's where it's going to be for a while with these subpoenas. So wild story. It's the story that just keeps giving. Make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned because we're going to have more on this because this story is not done. Make sure that notification bell, you ring it, you hit it, you hit the like button. We're going to be doing lots more. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.
the corrupt super mayor, Tiffany Henyard's attorneys are trying to silence me and even went as far as to have a judge order me to remove one of my videos. Hey, what's up guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Before we get into the details on how I am in currently in litigation with the super corrupt mayor, Tiffany Henyard's attorneys, America's most corrupt mayor. I wanted, I sent this video and I wanted to share it with each and every one of you. This was well put together by a local Fox affiliate. They've been doing great reporting on Tiffany Henyard and they put it all together for us to watch. Make sure you stay to the end so I can give you the updates on what my attorneys are doing in the Berwyn case and how that involves the Tiffany Mayor Henyard's attorneys. But let's get into it. Leader of a small village. We got our mayor right here coming from Don, Illinois. Attract the attention of the entire nation and get nicknamed the worst mayor in America. Everything she has initiated has been to promote her. Questionable expenses. I can map out their entire trip on the township credit card. Expensive police details. 162 hours. Oh, that's nothing. And allegations of retaliation. Did you take that as a threat? I took that as bullying. She's not shy about attracting attention. It makes her feel as if she's like a superstar. Until she starts facing questions. Let me ask you a few questions. Yeah, she says no. I'm asking her. We're going to talk. Now the feds are involved. And another controversial mayor is joining the story. We want transparency. With this much controversy coming from just one person, we got to ask, who is Mayor Tiffany Henyard? And what's behind the drama in Dalton? She cannot continue to intimidate and gangster her way through this. She cannot continue to intimidate and gangster her way through this. That's exactly what she is. She's a thug and a gangster. And she surrounds herself with people like that. Welcome. I'm Fox 32's Dane Placco. Tiffany Henyard actually has two political jobs on two public payrolls. As mayor of South Suburban Dalton, or as she calls herself, super mayor, and supervisor of Thornton Township, where she makes over $200,000 a year. Now, before Henyard's election in 2021, Dalton was like any other suburban community with festivals, parades, and its share of problems. But today, Dalton is known more for the mayor herself and the never-ending allegations that she's used and abused her two offices at Dalton and Thornton Township for pricey security details, trips to Vegas, unmissable highway billboards, and the curious donation of township tax dollars to a cancer charity named for, you guessed it, Mayor Henyard. Nobody knows something. Don't know nobody know nothing. Tiffany Henyard certainly isn't shy about attracting attention. Here she is starting a Dalton Village board meeting dressed like the Wesley Snipes character in the movie New Jack City. Can you believe this, ladies and gentlemen? Later, punctuating her political points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident. Pay me what you owe me. Thank you, DJ. Tiffany, you owe we the people something. You owe us jail time, and that will be coming very soon. Henyard's picture and name adorn virtually every public posting, both from Dalton, where as mayor she makes $46,000 a year, and in Thornton Township, where as the elected supervisor she collects more than $200,000 a year. But for all that money, Henyard's tenure at both has been chaotic, with firings, scandals, and a legal battle with the Dalton trustees over spending. Hey! So last fall, Henyard did something that would seemingly generate some good publicity, helping establish the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation to help breast cancer patients. And on the very day the charity was chartered, it received a huge donation, $10,000, from the Thornton Township Board, which Henyard presides over. Taxpayer money shouldn't be paid into those types of things. Stephanie Wiedemann is the former Thornton Township Chief of Staff whom Henyard fired shortly after taking over in March of last year. It almost felt like a takeover and a, a very aggressive one at that. Since her firing, Wiedemann has been documenting township spending and says she's stunned by the taxpayer dollars funneled into Henyard's charity, especially this. We got 10 days, we're going 196 miles. Last October, Henyard led a delegation of Dalton and Thornton Township employees and political supporters on a march to Springfield to promote her breast cancer charity, which she documented on her Facebook page. We're walking through Dalton. All right, we're in Brightwood now. We are in Godly now. We 
Oh, yeah, Bloomington, baby! I can pretty much map out their entire Springfield trip on the township credit cards. That's right. Henyard billed thousands of dollars in hotel rooms and meals during the trip to Thornton Township and Dalton credit cards. This corruption is unreal, ladies and gentlemen. But I just want to say really quickly, this is not unique to Mayor Tiffany Henyard. She is just the most obnoxious, you know, outwardly corrupt politician that I've seen. But there are so many all across this country. I travel across our great country, and this is what they do. They'll, you know, oh, we're giving out water. We're starting foundations. They don't care about us. Our government doesn't care about us, period. In addition, the video show Henyard used multiple village and township vehicles owned by taxpayers to escort the caravan, including a flatbed trailer with a photographer, flying a drone, and a DJ. We got our man right here. I wonder if that drone was part of the uh, Dalton Police Department. Remember, If you remember my video when I went to the Dalton Police Department, there was an officer out there flying a drone. They probably used the taxpayer's drone to for this charity event as well. Coming from Don, Illinois, walking all the way to Springfield. Yeah. make some noise for our man, the people's yeah. man. But they didn't always walk. We on motorbikes, baby. At times, riding electric bikes. Yeah, I see my bike. I start town ship supervisor. It looks like a misspending of tax funds. Um, I think that's the biggest that, that's the biggest concern. Dalton trustee Jason House has been doing battle with the mayor since she took office. Very disturbing to hear these things or to kind of see some of the receipts that appear to be connected to it. And I think the taxpayers really deserve better than that. And then there's the merch. There's a shirt. Want a t-shirt? Along the way, Henyard sold and gave away t-shirts and hoodies, also available on her charity's website. $30 for a Tiffany Cares Foundation t-shirt. $30. Can you believe it? Absolutely. Week before the trip, the township paid $17,000 for specially printed hoodies and t-shirts, but won't say what they're for. I think that everything she has initiated has been something to promote her, something to get her name in household, something to get people to buy into voting for her. Our investigation found at least $11,000 in public funds spent on that trip. But both Dalton and Thornton Township have been slow or unresponsive to open records requests. So what was the purpose of the 10-day march to Springfield? I have created a bill uh, which we're going to speak before the Revenue Committee to give everybody $5,000 on an income tax when they file if you are suffering from cancer. A noble goal, except the Revenue Committee wasn't meeting when the group arrived in Springfield. Henyard did later testify at a committee hearing in Chicago, but so far nothing has come of her bill. I think I'm doing a damn good job on leaving. So we went to a recent Thornton Township board meeting to ask Henyard some questions about all that spending. I've never ever been um, bitter to the news. Max, this is my olive branch to the media. Can you guys reach out to us and ask us our opinion before you post it? What's up with that guy to the left of her? He's a trustee. He's just grabbing her. I believe he's a trustee. He's just rubbing her arm. It's pretty weird. I appreciate it. And so we did. I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. But Henyard wasn't anxious to talk about her charity. Why did you and the, and the board vote to give your foundation $10,000? I'm the face of the foundation. My name is Nowhere, sir. So, yeah. I, my, I'm the face. You're the, the face. face. What was the purpose of going to Springfield? She's the face of the foundation, ladies and gentlemen. Yet the city administrator who's been indicted by the FBI and the Department of Justice is the name on the foundation, her city administrator. It sounds like some sort of scheme to me. Yeah, just because my name isn't on it, you know, I have nothing to do with it. Just because I promote it, I say it's my charity. I have my name everywhere. I'm the face. <laughs> Thank you guys. Hey, she doesn't have any more comments. No, we're going to talk. She doesn't have talk. any more comments. Thanks, no. guys. That's Keith Freeman, whom Henyard hired at both Dalton and Thornton Township and was part of her Springfield walk. Look at Keith. Keith, baby. Freeman also filed paperwork for the charity bearing Henyard's name. Why are you using public money for your personal charity? $17,000 And with that, her security detail hustled Henyard upstairs and blocked the staircase with a table. Hey guys, 
So we tried asking another employee who went on that trip. You went down to Springfield, and what were you hoping to do you in Springfield? You need to ask the people that handles that. I'm not the one to handle that. I was just riding the bike. We need more officers on the streets. We need our streets repaved. Um, so to spend that kind of money on a charitable event or supposed charitable event really doesn't seem like the best use of tax dollars. Take a drive to the south suburbs and you can't miss them. Four giant billboards featuring Tiffany Henyard's name in large letters along with her picture smiling down on the thousands of cars going by on Interstate 57 and the Bishop Ford Expressway. What are they advertising? One says fresh produce, another senior services, and this one simply says we offer general assistance. There's a phone number, but you wouldn't know what it's for unless you can read in teeny tiny letters Thornton Township Supervisor as you're speeding by. Look, we offer general assistance, Thornton Township Supervisor, Tiffany Henyard, massive on the billboard. You know, speaking of billboards, I think we're going to be talking about a billboard truck very soon. Stay tuned to the end of this live stream. Maybe I'll give you a sneak peek. Maybe, maybe, maybe. These are the billboards that have gone up along the expressways. We showed the billboards to Bert Odelson, an election attorney who's been working in Illinois politics for 50 years. When I first looked at it, I thought, what is she running for now? Because that's what it shouts out. Odelson, who represents a political faction opposed to Henyard and Dalton, says it's clear the billboards are promoting more than township services. He says they're essentially campaign ads. Uh, this is a blatant attempt to promote herself politically. Uh, the township should not have paid for these if they if they did, and I'm sure they did. They did indeed. Bills obtained by Fox 32 under open records laws shows Thornton Township paid more than $10,000 for the vinyl signs themselves and more than $12,000 to clear channel outdoor advertising for one month's rental of the billboards. What was your reaction when you saw it? I, well, first of all, I didn't know anything about them. Thornton Township trustee Chris Gonzalez says the board was never consulted about the billboards, which he says needed their approval. Kind of the, some of the first things that popped in my mind is, what are we doing? Um, we're not, this isn't a big sale. We're not selling cars here. I mean, if it's informational, then it should be informational. I mean, there's so many other ways we could have spent that money um, that would have, you know, directly helped people. This isn't the first time Henyard has used taxpayer dollars to burnish her own personal image. In fact, on other occasions, she spent a lot more. And you can't turn your head in Dalton or Thornton Township without seeing Henyard's picture or name. It's on all the government-owned vehicles. I've been there, ladies and gentlemen. I've been to the Thornton Township, Dalton, the village of Dalton. Her name and face are absolutely everywhere buildings, even on the rugs in the township, where we found a Tiffany Henyard 2024 calendar featuring all the important dates to remember, including her birthday. I would be having a fit if she was my client telling her not to do this. Veteran Chicago political consultant Delmarie Cobb says there would be nothing wrong if Henyard were using her own political funds for those promotional materials, especially the billboards. I actually had a candidate years ago who was running for Mayor Dalton, and that's what we did. We bought uh, billboards a lot. Billboards are effective. They were very effective against Patrick, psycho writer, the police commissioner of Nassau County, as we all saw, but they are effective, especially billboard trucks. Along the expressway, because if you're coming and going home all day, and one of the things I always say about billboards is they're working when you're asleep. In 2011, state lawmakers passed a law banning the practice of politicians putting their names on publicly funded signs, spurred by these tollway signs featuring former Governor Rob Lagojevich. That law does not extend to mayors or other elected officials, but election attorney Odelson believes the billboards do violate state election laws. It's a crime. Yeah, you're, you're using public funds for something that uh, taxpayer dollars shouldn't, shouldn't uh, be used for. And just when you think you've seen it all, take a look at this. When the first billboard went up last summer, Thornton was misspelled as Thornton. Another sign had to be ordered, apparently at taxpayer expense. In videos posted by Henyard herself, we see her being driven around and surrounded by Dalton officers, which got us to wondering, why all the cops? We weren't opposed to her having the security detail. We asked how long and how often. Dalton trustee Brittany Norwood says Henyard began assembling her details short. Look at that security detail, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that security detail for a village mayor. 
with a population of 20,000 residents. Look at that security detail. And I've run into a couple of these officers before, and they are not the nicest of people. They are tyrants. They're thugs, really. They circled me around at the township meeting. If you haven't seen that live, I'll link it in the description. But these guys are not good guys. Only after being elected in 2021, using hand-picked Dalton police officers. Using a Freedom of Information request, we obtained the work records for six of the officers assigned to Henyard's security detail at various times and showed them to some of Dalton's trustees. This is a Freedom of Information request we did to see how much overtime these officers are making on her security detail. Oh, wow. 162 hours. 162. Oh, that's nothing. What goes through your mind when you see these numbers? Um, uh, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. The officers are paid every... How is a trustee? I'm, I'm going to call out the trustee trustees here a little bit. You know, you're the trustee of the village of Dalton, and how are you not privy to all this financial misspending? I know she's not giving you the documents, but if a journalist can get their hands on the documents, why couldn't the trustees and see all this outrageous spending? Two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two-week period. That resulted in a single paycheck of more than $13,000. Officer Terry Young sounds like he might be uh, a little bit too close to Tiffany Henyard getting paid all that money. I don't know. Just speculation, but let me know what you think of the chat. Who's Officer Terry Young to this mayor? How? How does a person put in a two-week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. That's there's, impossible. There's 336 Does he hours never go to sleep? In fact, there are 336 hours total in two weeks, meaning Young was not being paid for only 33 hours over that period. Other officers on the security detail are also racking up overtime paychecks in the multiple thousands of dollars. Mayor, Let's mind see. if I ask you a couple questions about your security detail? Absolutely not. I'm asking her. Yeah, she said no. A couple weeks ago, we... This is great journalism right here. He's, you know, he's following the mayor around, asking her questions. He doesn't care about the security detail. But imagine, I want you all to just take a second and think, imagine if I did this. Imagine if I went after an elected official and started asking them questions. I do it all the time, so you don't have to imagine what happens when I do it, because I don't have a fancy Fox News uh, microphone. Uh, I get charged with crimes and arrested and put in jail and have to go through all these prosecutions. It's ridiculous. We as citizen journalists have the right to confront and ask questions of our elected officials. Tried to question Henyard about her detail as she went door to door in Dalton giving out water on a 100 degree day. Surrounded by police, firefighters, public works employees, and two videographers documenting for Dalton's Facebook page. I want to tell the people I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I hope they post what we actually do here in the village of Dalton. Stop telling lies. But what You're handing out a case cases of bottled water, Tiffany after spending tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on yourself, your weave, your trips to Las Vegas, hotel stays all throughout Illinois and across the country that have nothing to do with taxpayer stuff. You're disgusting, really. And you're just going to hand out, you know, it's like taking, you know, $100 from somebody and then giving them like 50 cents back and like, look, look at me. I'm, I, I'm charitable. <laughs> And we gave her an opportunity to explain the OT. Mayor, why do you need so many why don't you officers, ask about water? You ask, details, what you ask or about your water? security? What did you say, water? It sounded like you said water. water. Earlier that day, we watched as a Dalton cop drove Henyard from her other job at Thornton Township to a Mexican restaurant for lunch. Trustees say the security detail picks the mayor up at her home in the morning and is with her until she's dropped off at night, often taking her on errands and shopping. Does she need a security detail? Absolutely not. Why? Why would you need a security detail? Oh, she loves it. She just loves it. She loves the detail. <laughs> I think um, it makes her feel as if um, she's like a superstar. Dalton trustees have filed a lawsuit against Tenyard, saying she's not justified the need for security and is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on it without the board's approval. I see no justification whatsoever, and more than that, it's really a detriment to the residents of Dalton. How so? Uh, the residents, if we would take the same money and put it on officers patrolling the streets, then the residents would see a much better presence and public safety would be better. 
Or how about this? How about we just not, I don't know the crime statistics in Dalton, but how about we just lower the residents' taxes with all the money that's being misspent, right? I mean, just a thought. We've had a few shootings, so we need the extra police patrolling our streets instead of patrolling her. And we found Dalton credit card statements showing that Henyer takes the detail with her even when she travels out of town, spending thousands of dollars on plane tickets, lodging, and meals for the officers. Mayor, why are you taking all the officers out of town with you? Isn't that a waste of taxpayers' money? Anything you want to say to defend yourself on this? As for the village's finances, trustees say Dalton is now getting sued by some vendors for failure to pay its bills. In the last two fiscal years, we're $5 million in the hole, and a big part of it is the security detail. It's embarrassing. Embarrassing? It's embarrassing. You don't see the governor with a detail as hers. Several months after we broke the story about Henyard's expensive security detail, we got confirmation that it was impacting the ability to fight crime in Dalton. And that came in an exclusive Fox 32 interview with somebody who would know, Dalton's now former police chief. The manpower was just very stressed and critical to the point of almost breaking. Former Dalton Police Chief Robert Collins spoke to us from Florida where he's taken a new job after being fired by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard late last year. But Collins says he remains frustrated by what he experienced leading an undermanned, overworked police department while Mayor Henyard demanded a large personal security detail. You know, wrong is wrong and there's a time to hold people responsible and accountable for their action. But at some point, there would be two officers or three officers. And depending on if there was some type of event, it would be more officers. That's for a town of a little more than 20,000 people that's struggling economically and usually only has a few officers on duty per shift. Collins says Henyard's security detail was warranted when it started in 2021 after a police-involved shooting sparked protests and threats. And at some point... Oh, God forbid there's any protests, you know, the mayor is going to be definitely, come on, we have the right to protest. We have the right to peacefully protest. doesn't mean that the mayor needs a six man security detail to keep her away. We need, it's, it, you know, politicians love to be in front of cameras. They love it when it's advantageous to them, when they're getting elected, when they're running for their position. But as soon as they get into office, they hate cameras they outlaw them like they did in Schenectady and across the country. Oh, we don't want any cameras in here. We don't want transparency. But they'll hop in front of a camera and a microphone when it's advantageous for them. That's why all politicians left or right are disgusting and they do not care about we the people. And if you think they do, you got to do some more research. The protests stopped. However, the detail continued. Why do you need a security detail while you're out of town? Um, who's on the other end of that flight? that's going to do harm. Collins says he became increasingly frustrated because the mayor's detail tied his hands when it came to fighting crime. Just last week, a mass shooting on Sibley Boulevard left four people injured. Collins believes the bad guys know there aren't enough cops on Dalton's streets. But Village of Dalton has its challenges with gangs, guns, and drugs. And if those officers aren't there, the visibility isn't there. And if the visibility isn't there, then uh, Criminals have free reign. And it, it more or less was, these are the orders. This is what you have to do. Last week, Collins filed a civil lawsuit against the village of Dalton for wrongful termination, saying he was fired by the mayor without cause and without board approval because his wife is friends with some of the mayor's perceived political enemies. And uh, our contention is that it is illegal. Did he do anything wrong? No. Chief Collins, any position that he's ever been in is a policeman's policeman. He held the rank of chief, but he's a patrolman at heart. But it is frustrating to see the officers use like that. I'm sure the officers are frustrated too, but they follow new orders. As the attention on Henyard heated up, Dalton Village Hall and Thornton Township headquarters became the stage for an evolving soap opera. Village trustees started going rogue. Employees got locked out of their offices, and it became harder for the public and press to attend meetings, including one to vote on the mayor's salary that we learned included a poison pill provision that made any potential challenger think twice about running against Henyard. Did you know about this beforehand? No, absolutely not. Uh, no word was given to myself. 
Thornton Township Trustee Chris Gonzalez was just sitting down at the start of the Township's board meeting two weeks ago when he was handed a seven-page proposed ordinance requiring an immediate vote. You had no time to read No, and then we get pretty much into the meeting pretty quick. What it does is to ensure that Henyer continues to receive her $224,000 a year salary as Township Supervisor. But if a non-incumbent becomes supervisor, in other words, if someone challenges Henyard and beats her, the salary for that position drops to just $25,000 a year. So let me get this straight. Her salary keeps on going at $224,000 a year. And if somebody beats her and takes her position, they will be paid $25,000 a year. Well, the journalist said it right. It is a poison pill for sure. That is definitely not legal. A pay cut of nearly 90%. Trustee Gonzalez says it's a political poison pill to scare off competition. Discourage people from running um, is probably the first thing that comes to mind. Is this legal? No, it's 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 so illegal in so many ways. Municipal Attorney Bert Odelson, who represents Henyard's political opposition in Dalton, says under equal protection of the law, the salaries of elected officials have to be identity blind, meaning they don't change based on the person holding the job. It's maybe the worst attempt to try to dissuade people from running that I've ever seen, and that's a long time. And I just want to say one more thing, $225,000, $224,000 a year to be the township supervisor, another almost $50,000 to be the village of Dalton mayor. Our public servants are getting paid very, very well from our tax dollars. They have free medical insurance. They get paid good money. This is why when you go to the DMV, when you go to City Hall, when you go to any government building, you need to be treated with respect. We are paying them good money. They have great benefits. This is not some slave labor. They do this job because they want to do it. And it's supposed to be a noble position, but you're supposed to serve the public and treat people with respect. Go to the DMV and see how they treat you. It's ridiculous. Henyard isn't facing re-election until 2025, but already potential competitors are circling despite the drastically lower salary, including State Senator Napoleon Harris. But if Henyard is re-elected, she'll continue making the 224 k even if she seems to believe the job is worth a fraction of that. I think this is a job that should pay over 200000 or 25000 <laughs> I mean, probably somewhere in the middle, in all honesty. So this is the assessor's office. Cassandra Elston has been the assessor here in Thornton Township for the past 10 years, an elected position that helps residents deal with exemptions and property tax appeals. But when she arrived at work this morning, something strange happened. This was your office? Yes. What happened when you tried to open it? It doesn't work. Not only had Elston been locked out of her own office, but boxes of sensitive documents that she kept in her office were spread around the common area. This was under lock and key before. This was under lock and key. And now okay. it's just out in the open? Now it's just out in the open. So it has the taxpayer's name, address. So who did this to you? Well, I imagine this new supervisor, Tiffany Henry. So let me get this straight. All those sensitive documents that I always hear about, you know, you can't record in this public building, in the publicly accessible areas of this building, because privacy reasons, and we have sensitive documents, yet we have government officials like Tiffany Henyard that are just throwing sensitive documents all over in the common areas of a city hall. But yet, when I take my camera into city hall, it's a problem. You know, it's, I want to let you know, we all know this already, but just to make it clear, they don't it's they don't want cameras because they don't want transparency. It has nothing to do with protecting your information, my information or anybody's privacy. Period. Elston has been critical of Henyard's spending at the township and believes getting kicked out is political payback. But this is not going to stop me. This is my job. This is what I get paid to do. You guys remember him? The assessor she invited us inside. Okay. And that's Let when township chat, security office I'll pause it so you can get a good look at him. This is the same security officer who did the same thing to me at my camera, put his hand in my camera, put his hand in my face. Same exact guy. <laughs> what? These guys are thugs. These guys are criminals. These guys don't, they just follow orders. That's the problem. 
Law enforcement follows orders. Security, they're just following orders. They don't care if the order is lawful or if it violates your rights or if it hurts you. They're just going to follow their orders. Who stepped in. Okay. So you're That's the same guy from my video as well, the men on the right. Yes. Yeah. South Holland police were called to the scene, and they agreed with us that the assessor had every right to invite us into her office. The news crew is here to do an interview on me. Does Tiffany uh, Henyard have any morning. right to do this? Uh, not only Tiffany Henyard, but nobody has any right to do this to uh, a separate elected official like the assessor. The assessor's lawyer, Bert Odelson, tells me they plan to file a lawsuit in Cook County demanding she get her office back. It is extremely illegal. You can do and say pretty much what you want to say or do to me. But when you start doing things that affect the taxpayers, that's why I draw the line. After we finished the interview, somebody deactivated the key fobs for all of the assessor's employees, meaning now none of them can get into the office. So tomorrow they plan to set up tables and chairs here outside Township Hall to meet the public. The sign outside its headquarters says, Welcome to Thornton Township, people working with people. But when residents showed up last night to speak at a public board meeting, they got anything but a warm welcome. When I arrived, there was security here. He was standing at the bottom of the stairs preventing anybody from going up to the boardroom. I asked him if the meeting was downstairs. He replied yes. Stephanie Wiedemann and a handful of other residents wanted to speak directly to Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard, also the mayor of Dalton. I'm just curious to see who makes the decisions about how our tax dollars are being spent. But they never got that chance. After being blocked from going to the boardroom upstairs, they were sent to the basement where they were told the township board meeting would be held. It wasn't. They asked for a sign-up sheet for public comment. Never got it. And before they knew what had happened, the four-minute meeting upstairs was over and Henyard was gone without hearing from her constituents. They are violating our rights. I pay taxes here. I have a right to get up and speak whether this administration likes it or not. And not only were the residents shut out, so was a local newspaper reporter who came here to cover the meeting. Um, I was told by a security guard that I was not allowed upstairs where the boardroom meeting is. Josh Bootsma of the Lansing Journal says residents deserve to know how elected officials are spending their money. Thornton Township is the largest township in Illinois. And so there are a lot of people that are affected by the decisions, the financial decisions that this township makes. So I just want to say really quickly, ladies and gentlemen, the security guards wouldn't let them in the public board meeting room and all this. When I go past the security guards, you see the journalists here, they're all talking about how that's wrong, it's unlawful and everything. You know, when I go past the security guards, because I know my rights, we all know our rights and we have a right to be in the boardroom the news won't cover that and i get removed physically from the building and unlawfully arrested the local news won't cover it they don't talk about it because they see me as some sort of aggressor but this is exactly what's happening look what's happening to these journalists here these mainstream journalists and they don't care when it happens to an independent journalist a citizen journalist like myself and you know it's it's definitely concerning then Thornton Township trustee Chris Gonzalez, a frequent Henyard critic, was ordered out of the boardroom until the meeting began. Do you think any laws were broken last night by the way they handled the public? Well, definitely. I mean, if somebody wants to speak, this is a public, it's a public meeting, it's a public building, they should be able to come in. With Mayor Henyard now a regular target of criticism, Dalton employees and local business owners started feeling the heat, claiming they faced retaliation when they refused to support the mayor. Even a park permit was revoked for an event that was happening the same day as a music festival managed by, correct again, Mayor Henyard. Always a good time for everybody that comes out. Fun, exciting, good for the community. For the past eight years, Darren Bosley has organized an annual car show here in the parking lot of Needles Park in Dalton. But after paying $1,000 to the park district for this year's permit, Bosley got an unexpected call last Wednesday from Dalton Mayor Tiff. I mean, he keeps rubbing her arm. It's just weird to me every time I see it. The guy to her right. Tiffany Henyard's top assistant. Saying that the show would be shut down, but if I move my event to her location on Greenwood, that I would be fine. Did you take that as a threat? Yes, I took that as bullying. Sure enough, when Bosley showed up at the park Saturday morning, he found that giant concrete barricades had been placed at the entrance, and Dalton police were threatening to tow any cars that parked there. We're talking about two different governments. 
It's talking about the park government versus the village government. Dalton Park District President Cleo Jones says Mayor Henyard has no legal authority over Park District property and believes she didn't want the competition to hurt attendance at her own event a house music festival a few blocks away. So I'm not sure what her tactics were other than trying to bully us and push us away, but you know, that's not gonna happen here. What would you say to the mayor about this? Uh, get your life together, get your act together. Um, this is wrong for people that spend money with the park district to try to throw an event, a peaceful event, fine event, and it's good for the community, but you're taking that away from everybody. They just rushed in here, put police at the front of the door like they was doing a raid on a drug house or something. A team of Dalton police officers raided and shut down Pablo's Bar and Cafe and Rinky's Bar and Cafe, both located on Sibley, about a block apart. Everything going peacefully, nothing going on. It's like 10 police cars came in and they start pushing customers from here. And he said, if you don't leave, we're going to lock you up. Employees and owners say it's part of an ongoing campaign of harassment by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard that is costing jobs and money. This is 100% tyranny, ladies and gentlemen. She is literally using the police force as her own Gestapo unit to shut down businesses, shut down parks, any competition. It's disgusting what she's doing here. And that's why I wanted to share this video with every one of you because it details everything that she's been doing over the last couple of years. Business licenses have been stripped by Dalton, but they've continued to operate with a state license. I have like over 23 employees. They work from the local township. Now, end of the day, all the employees, they're going to lose them job. It's ridiculous. We all have mouths to feed. We all have kids. Uh, they are not giving us no explanation. On Monday, we visited both Rinkies and Pablo's to ask about allegations their licenses were being held up for political reasons. Then last evening, we broke the story that FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Less than two hours after our story aired, police raided the two bars. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. Think about that for a second. A journalist goes inside of these two bars to ask questions. Two hours later, they are raided by the Dalton Police Department. Dalton trustee Tammy Brown says she believes the raids are meant to send a warning to others not to talk. And she believes there's a reason so many Dalton businesses are having trouble getting their licenses renewed. I'm sure that they were asked to donate, make a donation, and most likely they didn't make a donation. Dalton residents had enough, and in April, Dalton's trustees voted to open an investigation into Mayor Henyard and invited everyone from the state's attorney to the FBI to come to Dalton and open the books. Well, trustees got their wish when we broke the news that FBI agents were in fact interviewing witnesses as part of a federal investigation. And then entering the fray, another mayor who frequently found herself in the crosshairs, former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. I will commit to you that I will. So just for full transparency, I was actually at this meeting where they hired Lori Lightfoot, I believe at $400 an hour, $500 an hour, something around there, some some crazy number. They so The ex-Chicago mayor, Lori Lightfoot. Listen, everybody was asking my opinion on this. Number one, I don't particularly like Lori Lightfoot for various reasons, but my main problem with this appointment and this hiring of her as a special investigator in all of this is that she doesn't have any real legal authority. My problem is a legal problem. She has no legal authority. She's getting paid tens of thousands of dollars to conduct an investigation, and she has the same amount of legal authority as I would. I would have done it for free. You know, could have just asked me, Dalton trustees. I would have done it for free. I would have documented the whole thing. But uh, <laughs> she has no legal authority. She can't subpoena anyone. She she can't bring charges against anybody. You know, Lori Lightfoot was a federal prosecutor once upon a time. So I'm not not again. Her aside, right? Um, you know, I know there's going to be comments regarding you know her appearance and everything. But comments aside, legally, she has no authority. This is why I thought that this is a big, big, 
big waste of taxpayer money by the Dalton trustees. And, you know, the when I was in this meeting at this very meeting that you're looking at right now where she was uh, announced as the special investigator and um, the crowd was cheering. Everybody was so happy. Yeah, Lori Lightfoot's going to come and save us. I mean, she just can't. She can't. She has no legal authority. You're just wasting tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money. But that's what politicians do. They waste taxpayer money. Follow the facts where they lead without bias. At the conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations. And I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees, vendors, and others. This board. What are you going to do if she doesn't? comply with you, Lori. Nothing. A Freedom of Information Act request that anybody can do. Specifically as made reaches to the state's attorney, attorney general, governor's office, and as we know there are ongoing, well, it's been reported that there's ongoing um, investigations from federal entities. Uh, those entities, as we know, can take anywhere from two months to five years. So we feel this option will give us um, an independent process. Overall, it tells me that the investigation... So just really quickly, again, the trustee Jason House there, he's talking about, you know, the FBI is looking into it reportedly and other law enforcement agencies are looking into it. So, but we wanted to do, I, when I was there, I heard the whole um, thing of what he was saying is that he said that, you know, we want a quick independent investigation, but what is it going to accomplish? What is this investigation going to accomplish? Again, put Lori Lightfoot, she's a very controversial figure, but put her to the side for a minute. What does it accomplish? She has no legal authority to subpoena, to bring charges. It, it's just ridiculous. Honestly, it's a waste of taxpayer money. And I said that at the second meeting I went to. I told all the residents that. Investigation is expanding. It's not just focusing on the city of Dalton. Former FBI agent Ross Rice says the subpoenas revealed the burgeoning scope of the federal criminal investigation into Thornton Township Supervisor and Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. One Sabina focuses entirely on Henyard, including two businesses she owns, a restaurant and a property management company, as well as Henyard's political fund and the charity bearing her name. It asks for all records, including personnel files, wage and tax statements, time and attendance, records of work performed, contracts, and checks written to cash. The mayor and the township supervisor, who are one and the same, appear to be the primary focus of the investigation. The second subpoena requests a kitchen sink of township records, including financial reports, budgets, payroll records, and ordinances covering credit card purchases, expense reimbursements, security details, and the use of vehicles. The subpoena also asks for payments in credit card expenditures for a number of township employees, including Henyard's top lieutenant, Keith Freeman. It's very broad in the scope. It's very broad in the number of people and entities they're asking uh, for records on. I was pleasantly surprised. Stephanie Wiedemann is a former township employee turned whistleblower who's been helping the FBI in its investigation. What do we want? We want township back. Over the weekend, she took part in a rally of Thornton Township residents calling on Henyard to resign. Wiedemann says the latest subpoenas are a welcome sign. I hope that the township founds, finds a way to be able to recoup the damage that has been done. But I hope that the people that did the damage, I mean, there's repercussions for making bad decisions. Now, it'll take some time for investigators to untangle the mess in Dalton. And at the time we're recording this, we're still a year away from Dalton's next mayoral election. But if the next year is anything like the last three, then the story of Mayor Henyard and the village of Dalton will continue to surprise and infuriate. And we'll keep covering it right here. At all right, ladies and gentlemen, let me just uh, pull this up. This, all right. I know this is a long live stream, but, you know. Sometimes that's the way it is. Um, I'm going to pull this up for you guys here right now. Do, 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 do. Okay. This is the law firm that represents or represented uh, Mayor Tiffany Henyard, the super corrupt mayor there, the tyrannical mayor. So it's called the Del Galdo Law Group. So when I first heard about these, the, apparently they have, they're not getting paid. I was told by one of the partners in the firm 
That's actually defending Berwyn, Illinois, the city of Berwyn, Illinois, on my federal lawsuit against them for unlawful arrest. I was told that they, before they even re, uh, withdrew, uh, wanting to withdrew, wanting to withdraw from being her attorney, that they owed her, that they were owed hundreds and thousands of dollars um, in legal fees. As you can imagine, you know, Tiffany Henyard has a lot of legal fees uh, associated with all her criminal activity, uh, but. Delgado Law Group, I've done some research into them. They are trying to silence me. And this is where you guys really need to pay attention. I wanted to give you the whole background on Tiffany Henyard so you know the type of people that, you know, her lawyers are working with here and they're defending her and they're defending her actions, or at least they were again. Um, but this is the kind of law group that this is. So they are representing the city of Berwyn and they represent um, Tiffany Henyard. So if you see here, they are a uh, Chicago-based attorney. If we go here. This is the person that you see all the time, the senior partner and managing member, Michael Delgado. Michael Delgado is the boss here. He's the one that uh, you you often see him with Tiffany Henyard. You will often see him with Tiffany Henyard. Um, he's the one that directly represented her. I'm sure others as well. If we scroll down here all the way towards the bottom, and again, I'm probably going to, you know, my, you know, there's, they're, they're going to this person right here, Synthony Granfield. Synthony Granfield is a partner of this law firm and she is representing uh, the city of Berwyn in my federal lawsuit. From the first day I met her, I met Cynthia at, a, at my deposition in Chicago, Illinois. She's been nothing but unprofessional, nasty, and just plain, just unprofessional, nasty, rude, whatever you want to say. That, that's who she was. That's who she was to me. I treat everybody I come in contact to with respect, and she treated me with none. I don't know if she has a personal thing against me. She doesn't like my videos. I don't know, but it's not a professional, you know, kind of. She wasn't professional with me, and this is just this didn't just happen at one time. The first time during the depositions, I FOIA requested her invoices to the city of Berwyn because I wanted to see, this is a private law firm, as you can see, I wanted to see how much is the city of Berwyn paying these people, this law firm, the Delgado law firm, to uh, represent them in, in this lawsuit. It's a clear cut case of unlawful arrest. If you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about the Berwyn, where I held the city, where I held the protest there, I was unlawfully arrested for recording. So Cynthia, during the deposition, she says, because I requested her invoices. She says, I'm not intimidated by you, Mr. Reyes. I just want you to know that started freaking out, ladies and gentlemen, in the middle of a deposition, freaking out, but it doesn't stop there. So Cynthia, she doesn't like the fact that I talk about her on my channel. She's not going to like the fact that I'm talking about her on my channel right now. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to get, you know, a good talking to by the judge or something. I don't know, but I, I will never be silenced. Never. Cynthia, if you're watching this, you will never silence me. A judge will never silence me. I will never be silent. Never, never, never. I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling facts. So when we did the depositions of the city administrator, Rusiaba Green, and the two officers, the sergeant and the detective Mon um, Monaco, that are also named in my federal lawsuit, we did uh, the depositions for all three of them in one day, my attorney. It was very good. They are video recorded. Where are the videos? I can't show them to you. I have video depositions of three defendants in a federal lawsuit, two police officers and a city administrator, some of which committed perjury. Maybe they misremembered. I don't know. What's the difference between misremembering and perjury? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I would call it perjury and who perjured themselves. And I can't show you the video. Why can't I show you the video? Because Cynthia here, Cynthia Granfield, she went to the court. The minute we put in, we have, you have to submit a notice of video deposition. We set up, we, I paid extra for it. We set up, we, we sent them the notice of video deposition. And then she ran to the court to the federal judge. And she said, no, we don't want to be on camera. We don't want him posting our, our the, the footage everywhere. And she went crying to the court. And unfortunately, the court sided with her. This is the order here that I received. Let me see if I can make this any bigger for you guys. 
This is the order that I received here. You see the United in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois, Eastern Division, Sean Paul Reyes, plaintiff v. Richard Volante, that's Sergeant Volante, Detective Monaco, and Ruth Siaba Green, the city administrator. And this is Magistrate Judge Maria Valdez who made this order. So I'm not going to read the entire thing because I think that's counterproductive, but I just want to show you the end here on page right here. Accordingly, the plaintiff's motion is to compel is granted in part and denied in part. The defendant's cross request for a protective order and sanctions is granted in part and denied in part. Defendants shall be presented to sit for videotape depositions. I'm like, okay, great. Yes, they're forcing them to do the videotape deposition. That is my right. If you don't know, it's federal. Um, in, in the federal rules, you have a right to a video deposition. We've all seen video depositions before. So it's granted. Right. Okay. However, this is where things go off sideways, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that like button. Share this video. This needs to be exposed to the world. However, the resulting video footage shall be used only for the purposes of this litigation and shall not be posted online or on social media or utilized outside the court proceedings in any manner. The prohibition set forth in this order shall survive the conclusion of these proceedings. So what that means is that even after this case is over, I still can't share the depositions with you. What if somebody else has them in their possession? I don't know. I'm sure lackluster can get a hold of them, right? I mean, I'm sure a local news reporter can get a hold of them somehow. What if Cynthia leaks it to somebody? I don't know. I mean, it says I can't do it. This is a violation of my rights to prepare. There's discovery rules that she could set forth in, you know, while the case is ongoing. But to say that this order survives this lawsuit is absolutely ridiculous. For those of you who are attorneys out there, you know what I'm talking about. But it's absolutely ridiculous. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Plaintiff's failure to abide by this order will result in sanctions up into including dismissal of this action. So if I show you, I have them on my computer right now if i show you these video depositions i this um my lawsuit can get dismissed right plaintiff is also ordered to remove the post referencing defense counsel from his youtube channel so i had made a video a live stream just like this one where i talked about cynthia granfield and the delgaldo law firm and again made no threats you know you guys have been watching me for over three years now. I don't make threats against anyone. I make threats to do legal action, to take legal action and defend my constitutional rights. But any type of threats of any harm of any sort, I don't engage in that kind of activity. I save that for law enforcement officers. They they engage in that kind of activity and public servants. They, they engage in that activity with me, right? Um, I'm peaceful. But they ordered me to remove the YouTube video that I had talking about her, where all I did was show... What I just showed you, I showed you the, um, I showed you the the website. I talked about Cynthia Granfield. I saw, talked about uh, Michael Delgado, and uh, I was ordered to remove it. So that's interesting. That's outside again for attorneys out there, and for those of you who don't know, that's outside of discovery material. That's not video depositions. That is outside of discoverable material. So therefore, she has no. The judge has no authority to tell me to take down a video that I posted on my channel, zero. It, it's absolutely incredible that she thinks she has that authority. You know, again, all respect to the court that's, that's you know, if, if all deserved respect to the court system, right? But I can't respect an order like this that violates my rights. How, why would I? Why would I? It's tyranny. To the extent that Newsom, and then she cites a case, to the extent that Newsom argues, she cites um, Newsom, v oakton committee collective right to the extent she quotes to the extent that newsom argues magistrate judge mcshane 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 did not have the authority to order him to remove rec records from youtube he is incorrect the magistrate judge has the power to order newsom to remove videos from youtube under rule 37b so rule 37b is in regards to discovery just so we're clear my video, I don't know about Newsom's video, but Newsom, it could have been part of Discovery that he posted it. I don't know. But my video is definitely not part of Discovery, ladies and gentlemen. So she has no authority to do this. It's absolutely insane. I just want to get this case over and done with. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to talk about this case. You know, attorneys don't like it when you talk about cases. I mean, 
my attorney probably won't be too happy that I'm talking about the case and, um, you know, laying some legitimate criticism on the feet of the judge here. But it, it's legitimate criticism. It's outside the bounds of the law and her authority. And if I can't talk about it, then what am I doing? My whole platform is to talk and expose corruption, whether it's Super Mayor Tiffany Henyard, judges, prosecutors, law enforcement, anyone that misuses their office, that engages in official misconduct against we the people, I am going to talk about it and report on it. So, I mean, it is what it is. That's just the way it is what it is, you know? But um, so that's how they're trying to silence me, ladies and gentlemen. Cynthia Granfield right here. Again, I'm not going to click read in full bio because, you know, they're going to freaking, they're going to freak out about, you know, everything. Hold on. Let me just, um, I want to look at something really quick. I want to see if I could, uh, just give me a minute. I wanted to take a look at their Google reviews. So the Del Galdo law firm, law group, excuse me, from, from my knowledge, they represent municipalities like Berwyn, Thornton Township, you know, Mayor Henyard. They represent, they have like really good expertise in municipal law. So they defend against a lot of federal lawsuits against police officers, against that's, you know, this is what they do. But uh, let's take a look at this. Um, Hold on, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Hold on. All right. We're live, so bear with me. So we have Graham Cole. How can this firm stand by while one of their lawyers sits and represents such a low-life criminal like Tiffany Henyard? <laughs> the insanity that Michael De Delgado sits and watches his client perpetrate is disgusting. You should be ashamed. This firm is well paid by our tax dollars to represent the authoritarian Tiffany Henyard and her administration. Worst lawyers ever. Worst lawyers ever. Billed seven hours more. And when you ask them to justify the bill, they say that the case is complicated and they need to hire a new law firm, which will bill $550 an hour. They're never returning phone calls. What a bad law firm. Wow. One star. One star is crazy. Not a first choice or a second. Horrible experience. Unprofessional. What did I tell you? Unprofessional. That's exactly the word that describes Cynthia Granfield. And I didn't even tell you, during the depositions of the defendants, the city administrator, sergeant, and detective, I was on my phone, you know, taking notes, making sure that I was being engaged. I flew all the way to Illinois just for that one day in order to sit there. I didn't have to. It's being recorded. I wanted to sit there in the deposition with them. And I'm taking notes and everything. And she's like, excuse me, and interrupts my attorney very rudely. And she says, excuse me, what is Mr. Reyes doing on his phone? What is he doing? Well, it's none of your business what I'm doing on my phone, Cynthia. I'm allowed to be on my phone. Every time I get in a room with Cynthia, she acts nice at first and puts on this professional, you know, persona, and then it just deteriorates into a rude, unprofessional woman, an attorney who represents, from my experience, who represents corrupt government officials for a living. You know, again, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and gets paid by taxpayer money. But then every time I'm trying to get more invoices, they gave me a couple of invoices regarding how much they charge. She's charging for every little thing, which again, lawyers do that. I have personal experience with that, but I'm trying to get more invoices to, so I can go just so you know, if the mayor of Berwyn is watching this, Cynthia, if you're watching this, anybody, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take all your invoices that you're charging the taxpayer of Berwyn, and I'm going to bring them to a city council meeting, and I'm going to show everybody how much you are charging them to represent them, their po the police officers, in a lawsuit where a man was unlawfully arrested. One star, one star, and then that's it. You know... I'm going to, uh, why not? I am going to leave my feedback here as I've dealt with this law firm before. Um, I'm just going to say very unprofessional. There we go. Very unprofessional. There we go. Done. Right? All right, guys. 
This is a long stream. It's almost been an hour long. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. It's hot in here today. It's a hot day here on Long Island. Really appreciate all you guys' support. Make sure you hit that like button, share this video. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you stay tuned. I got a good video coming out this weekend, uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, oh, for those of you who stayed in here this long, 5,800 of you, for those of you who stayed in here this long, I will let you know the billboard truck has been secured. The billboard truck has been secured. It's thanks to each and every one of you. It's thanks to a lot of different factors, but we will never be silenced again. Stay tuned. Big things to come. Make sure you share the video. Peace. She's here. Okay. You know, this is <laughs> such disrespect. Yeah, it is. Disregard. She don't care. Would you would someone let her know we're waiting for her? She knows. <laughs> she <laughs> she, like, she got a little she 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 watching she everybody. You know she knows you. She are right. You don't call everybody in. Yeah. She knows you. I was and I make a statement. She don't care. Sure. Please. And I want to know who controls the mic. You just said it. Who does that? From you, you just feel your appointment. So I just wanted to make um, a statement really quick. I want to address um, an incident that took place at a board meeting in Dalton that most of you were in. And, um, you know, it was a lot of negative energy going on in the room. And I attempted to bring positive, um, a positive perspective to the discussion. And my approach was not received well. And instead of maintaining my composure, and positivity, I reacted inappropriately. I ended up calling someone old and ignorant, and I also called someone a clown, which was offensive and unprofessional. I deeply regret, regret my actions, and for a long time, I was stubborn and failed to acknowledge that I owed an apology. As an employee of the Village of Dalton, at the time, I should have conducted myself with professionalism, regardless of the circumstances. And I sincerely apologize for my behavior. It's not a reflection of who I am, and I do not want that moment to define me. And so I hope um, everyone that was offended by that statement can um, accept my sincere apologies. And I also want to say, um, I want to address the concerns that have been raised by many of the residents of Dorian Township. Um, I recently read an article that someone sent me from the South Suburban newspaper. And in that article, it was titled, it was more of a question, it said, Norton Township trustees in the hot seat. Um, and in the article, it highlighted that not one of us trustees had issued a statement or a press release regarding any information that the public has concerns with. We haven't given our uh, role and where we stand, our opinion or concerns or plans to tighten up the situation that the citizens are concerned about. And additionally, it stated, and this was a quote, it said, seriously, if you are not a part of the solution, then you are a part of the problem. And there is definitely a problem at Norton Township, the person wrote. And I want to acknowledge the concerns that so many of you have, voice, have been voicing for so long. And I want to assure you that I am committed to improving communication and transparency. My intentions are sincere. I see, hear, and understand your concerns. Um, and I have some of those same concerns. And I'll no longer sit on the board um, with a quiet voice. I will use my influence to do what's right for the people of uh, Thornton Township. And I understand that the public has lost trust and confidence in us as board members. But I stand here will sit here today and say that I will do what's necessary to reveal that trust and confidence. From my mouth to your ears, I want you to know that I stand with the residents of Fort Township and I am committed to being a part of the solution. Thank you for holding me accountable and for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.